Welcome to Shanghai, China. The famous skyline on the Bund disappears into the clouds above and plays backdrop to yet another custom-built, state-of-the-art skate park for the first stop of the 2019 Vans Park Series. The Vans Park Series Pro Tour is the premier competitive showcase for park terrain skateboarding, the fastest growing discipline in skateboarding today. Combining all aspects of culture, street, and transition, the Park Series is home to the most exciting show in skate. The men's field is stacked with contenders. 2018 world champion Alex Sorgente is back, looking to defend his narrow victory over one of the tour's biggest stars, Pedro Barros. Not far behind them, seasoned tour pros like Corey Juno, CJ Collins, and Roman Pavich are gunning for the spotlight, ready to bring their skating to the next level and prove their ranks here in China. The level of women's skateboarding is at an all-time high. Defending world champion Brighton Zoyner is leading the charge. But it's all about who can drop their line when it counts the most. With former champ Nora Vasconcelos, wildcard Lizzie Armanto, and Brazilian superstar Indiara Asp in contention, there's no telling who will swoop in for the victory. The abundant, bustling streets of the most populated city on the planet are alive with anticipation here on the banks of the Huangpu River, and the finals are about to go down. Welcome to the 2019 Vans Park Series Pro Tour. That's right, skate fans, we are back. This is the 2019 Vans Park Series. We're live from Shanghai, China, new places, new faces, and of course, incredible skateboarding about to go down right in front of your eyeballs. Chris Cote here with one of the new faces, Tony Hawk. Hey. Welcome to Vans Park Series. Thank you, happy to be here. Happy to be in Shanghai for the first time, too. Well, this is, uh, as you can see here, another purpose-built skate park for the reason that we all want to see, high-speed ripping skateboarding. And uh, with the backdrop like Shanghai, China, you just can't go wrong. Everything is in its proper place. This is the final for the women's division. This is awesome. Uh, it's relatively new here in China, too, for skateboarding. So to see it grow so quickly and to see the anticipation here and the level of talent that we have, is, it's exciting. Well, we're going to get into the finals in just a moment, but let us tell you what you have in store for you for the 2019 Vance Park Series World Tour. Like I said, we got some new stops. We're going to start it off right here in Shanghai, China. You see that beautiful skyline behind you, Shanghai, the burgeoning skate scene, only getting better as a Park Series now in its third year coming to China. From here, we're gonna go down to Brazil for that incredible park that we built last year in 2018, San Paulo. Of course, the skate scene down there, second to none. And then we go to Montreal, uh, and which is kind of the middle ground there with relatively new to skating in China. Brazil has had a hardcore skate scene for a long time. Montreal has been pretty steady. I've done some really good exhibition there the last couple of years, so I'm excited for that one. And then on to Paris, and Paris has a very strong skate scene, especially in Europe. The biggest demos I've ever done have been there, so uh, I can't wait to see all of this action come to that big city. Yeah, this, as you can see, an epic global tour. It's all gonna wrap up in Salt Lake City for the World Championships. That is where we're going to crown our world champion of park skateboarding for men and women. But we gotta get there first, and you gotta go through this gauntlet, Shanghai, China. The park behind us is absolutely perfect. We've seen the skaters have a relatively easy time getting into this park. Sometimes in the past we've seen, you know, challenges in adapting and getting used to the park, but the park behind us, it seems like, right on everybody's getting into it from there let's go down to the deck we're welcoming back the one and only dune chris pastris what's up buddy 
What's up, boys? I'm honored to be joining, joining you here today alongside another legend, Christian Hasoy. We'll be calling the action from the deck. And the big storyline here today with the women's finals, our 2017 champion, Nora Vasconcelos, got edged out. So that really opens up the field for a lot of new names, like Mami Tazuki, Sakura Nakazima, uh, Brazil's Indiara Asp. It is really anyone's game. Any one of these eight women, we can't forget Jordan Barrett, could win this event. So really exciting. Practice is going off, and we are hyped to kick off stop number one from here in Shanghai. No doubt. Well, like you said, Tony, a relatively new skate scene here in China. And to illustrate that fact, we've got the one and only Jeff Grasso with his love letters dedicated to Shanghai, China. Welcome back to the letters, China edition. China is, is very short history for skateboarding. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first group Chinese skaters should be started in uh, 1989. Okay. It's, it's almost 30 years. Obviously, the parent they don't want you to be a skateboarder. There were no formative years of tic tacking in the grass. It was it was straight to Love Park. In uh, Shanghai, had its own Love Park in the early 2000s. 就把我整个人改变了，其实我玩滑板的时候。Well, you can see the house is getting packed here with skate fans from all over China. Uh, we have some new faces hitting the course in just a few minutes. But then, of course, we've got some legends with us as well. Christian Hasoy is with us, as well as Steve Caballero. We almost got the whole Bones Brigade down here on the deck. <laughs> hey, up, guys, guys, this is Christian Hasoy here. I'm at the Vans Park Series with Steve Caballero. And uh, it's 30 years marks the anniversary of skateboarding in China. And Steve Caballero with also da Danny Wainwright with the first skateboarders to ever come to China, pro skateboarders. What was it like back then, Steve? Well, that was back in 1994, and it was pretty primitive. Uh, skateboarding had just reached here a few years before that. George Powell had sent some boards out, and a di uh, distributor had distributed there and brought Danny and myself out here. And uh, I felt like that was uh, the beginning of the growth of the industry and sport here. Wow. So here we are, 2019 Vans Park Series back in Shanghai, China. How do you feel? What do you think skateboarding has changed since then? Oh, it's changed a lot. Uh, a lot of skaters came out here over the years and started filming parts um, in the cities of uh, Shanghai and other cities in China. And I feel that this competition here is gonna really push uh, the growth of the industry and the sport and the government. And uh, you know, 2020 is coming around with the Olympics in Japan. And I think uh, you're gonna see a lot more skateboarders come out of this country. Wow, I agree. I definitely agree. Now you've, we skated the course this morning. We got a private session. And uh, now do you have a favorite skater to win the contest now that you've actually... We saw the prelims. We saw the semis. But what do you think? Who's, who's going to be on top? Um, uh, shoot, CJ Collins, uh, Patrick Ryan. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of guys, man. A lot of guys. Those are some of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. You heard it from Steve Caballero. I'm Christian Asoy. Back to you guys in the booth. Right on. Thanks, guys. I, I love the, the sentiment that we saw with Jeff Grosso's love letters. Basically, to have George Powell come and literally give the boards planting the seeds of skateboarding yep. here in China. And one of their first introductions to skating was through the movie Gleaming the Cube. So I, I feel That's great. partly <laughs> responsible yeah. for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, uh, yesterday we had the preliminaries and the qualifying rounds for both men and women. The women came and almost destroyed the park. They didn't leave much left for the guys. It was incredible to watch. So let's take a look at how these women got to the finals. This is the qualifying rounds. Little girl, big job. Oh, 
Stellar display of skateboarding right there. What I love to see when we start back up here in Vans Park Series is you really get to see the progression of, you know, quote unquote, the off season. Who's been skating hard? Everybody has come back better than we left them in 2018. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I can't believe the level just from in terms of overall how far it's come just in a year. And these girls are going for it. I, I have some picks for underdogs, too. Well, let's get to those picks. Before we get into the finals here, we like to do our commentator picks. Not necessarily who we think is going to win, but who we're excited to watch. I'm going to start with you. Tony, who you got? Uh, well, I think that uh, Kisa Nakamura is kind of an underdog. She's the dark horse. She's very powerful. That The thing you miss is that between her power and her speed and her confidence is that she has the tricks. Like, she's doing really technical stuff, and it kind of gets lost because she looks like she's so confident and going so fast. But watch her closely, and uh, I think she might be in on the bubble right now, and she's going to move up. Yeah, she blasted her way through the semis. Really fun to watch. Solid pick there. I'm going to make my pick. I'm going to go with Brazil's Indiara Asp. I love her style. She's super fast and smooth. She always seems to save hammers for the finals. And I mean, she is a bad woman. I've seen her take some big slams yeah. and come back swinging. So really fun skater to watch. Indiara Asp. I and can't she's wait. got a layback air. Big fan. There you go. Uh, Chris Pastris on the deck. Who is your pick to watch here in the women's final? Solid pick, guys. And I am going with powerhouse Jordan Barrett. She's got three podium finishes from 2018 here at Vans Park Series. She's got power pack lines and a super diverse arsenal of tricks. So Jordan's going to kill it. I like it. Pastoris is going with the numbers there. Three podium finishes for Jordan. She battled some injuries, but it looks like through that offseason, she's come back stronger than ever. So the format here for the Vans Park Series Women's Final is uh, it's basically fast and furious skateboarding. Uh, all four, all skaters will get four runs each. We took eight skaters from our big diverse field to start with. You get 40 seconds to skate. If you fall, your time is up. The fourth run, you get that first wall rebate. Everything resets. Basically, you can do the hardest trick imaginable that you have in your arsenal. If you make it, you keep going. That could be your run. If you fall, everything resets. You go back to square one. It's your own personal best trick contest. One try, though. And uh, best one run count. So you can do the same run over and over to get everything perfectly dialed. Of course, in the judges' eyes, they just want to see that best run you have. And eventually, within uh, these next uh, couple of minutes, we're going to see this thing fired up. And uh, we're going to get this finals started. So like I said, we had some upsets in the earlier rounds, the semifinals. But we get here now. And we have eight of the world's best female park skaters on hand. Indiara Asp, Lizzie Armanto, Mami Tazuka, Shakira Yosuzumi, Brighton Zoiner, Poppy Star Olsen, Jordan Barrett, and Kisa Nakamura. And just like on the men's side, this is a global field from all corners of the earth. It's great to see. I would say even a year ago, you wouldn't have seen a, a, one of the finalists from Japan. Now we have three. Yeah, almost half the field coming from Japan. So that shows you their uh, dedication to skateboarding. 
So uh, there you see the crowd in the house, the beautiful Shanghai skyline behind us. This park has been incredible for our skateboarders over the past few days. And we are going to get right into it. Our first skater to drop is going to be India Asp, part of that RTMF crew from Florinopolis, Brazil. She's 21 years old, a goofy footer. She's been in every contest in the past three or four years. I mean, she is a the ultimate park rat. She is so good, so fast, and super consistent. So we're gonna get 40 seconds on the clock. Remember, the time starts right now. It's fun to watch her because she she will try some of the hardest stuff and take big slams and get back up and do it again. Here's that layback hair. I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah, I love that a lot of the skaters we have here at Advanced Park Series, they have that diverse mixed bag of old school and new school tricks. That really, that, that's kind of the combination that we're looking for in a Park Series winner. Absolutely, and someone who can who can navigate these mini ramp sections, you know, that that could be something that really helps your score, and even though it may not seem like it's a lot of effort. You see that, that uh, wall plant, lean air. Ooh, stale fish, barely catching it. Well, that nice. shows you her consistency right there. That's what I mean about the mini ramp stuff. So right there, frontside 50-50 to Fagey. That is a hard trick. It's a frightening trick. You can you can take big slams on it, and she ended her run with that. And I know the judges will take notice. And I think for the non-skaters, that may not look like much, but that is a tricky one. You know, we were talking about this before we started here. This is really the amalgamation of vert skating, mini ramp skating. Uh, you know, bowl skating, almost pump track skating as well. You kind of, and then you have street elements. So you're really looking for these well-rounded skaters. And then of course, this is all really taken from the DIY scene. This park really grew out of, you know, places like Burnside, where skaters uh, built their own exactly what they wanted. You know, when you were skating Delmar Skate Ranch, there was different bowls, right? It was all sure. separated. Yeah, but also it, they, those parks were built into the landscape, so they had, it, it was sort of like what they were forced to build, and it ended up being all these different transitions and hips and things, and they utilized it, and now here we are, 20 years later, creating them for giant competitions. And Brian, for Brighton Zoyner to do lip slides. Yeah, Brighton Zoyner, you know, she is fortunate enough to have grown up with oh! a ton of parks like this around, and she's already on a fiery run. She lives in Encinitas, California, which you look at what's happening in Encinitas right now. You know, when I grew up, there was one park. It was Del Mar Skate Ranch. Now there's 15 <laughs> parks in Encinitas that, that have a lot of these same features for her to train. Ooh, a big slam right at the finish. So at the end of time, if the skater is going up the wall, they'll count that last trick. Right, so they'll, they'll count that as a fall, which is unfortunate. For better or for yeah, worse, you know, uh, it can but, work But I'm glad you. there's that clarity because it used to be sort of arbitrary. Someone would go up and try something and they'd fall and then it was sort of, they get a pass from it. But now it, it counts and it counts for the better. Well, toughness is also uh, something that counts for these young ladies. There you see Brighton right there. That was, a, that was a heavy slam. You saw she didn't really get the chance to slide out of that slam. It was really straight to the flats. Right, so uh, she'll fight back. Coming up next from Santa Monica, but representing Finland, Lizzie Armanto. Armanto. You know Lizzie well. She's a birdhouse team runner. Absolutely. Uh, we've been touring for years together, and uh, I'm really proud of Lizzie and how far she's come and how she's taken it in her own direction. And uh, she knows that she's somewhat of an ambassador to women's skating, and she wears it well. Absolutely. Ever since that famous photo, the layback tail slide that she had from Santa Monica. Oh, yeah. And Lizzie Armanto coming off a 2019 Women's Combi Pro win. So momentum counts. I mean, coming through to this contest with confidence when you know this field is going to be this stacked. Now, right there, it was a backside tail slide. Oh, big slam there. Wow. She went from a backside tail slide over the hip into a backside boneless. All those tricks are are difficult and would count, you know, just if you were preparing just for one of them. But to do them in a row, uh, she's going to score well if she makes that run. So Lizzie leaves some time, some time to uh, burn there on the clock. Remember, these skaters get 40 seconds, but if you slam, your run is over. Here's a look back at Lizzie Armanto. And, it, you know, it's not about packing trick after trick after trick. You have to make it look good from trick to trick, and you have to use the entire park. The judges are going to be really 
you know, focused on seeing what you can do in the entire landscape of this skate park. And they've made it very clear that straight up and down tricks are not going to count for as much as ones that grind or slide. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. There's a new line in the judging criteria, which we'll get to, but before that, from Newcastle, Australia, 18 years old, Poppy Star Olsen. She is the Oceania champion. Every contest that comes to Australia, she wins it. Yeah, Poppy has really come into her own the last few years. And you can tell that she skates a lot of balls with those big hand plants and feeble grinds and uh, transfer. I mean, she's, this, this runs nonstop. I love the way she reads these parks. And she definitely shines in the deeper sections, but you can tell she's been putting in work in those smaller corners and hips. Yeah, so in that last 20 seconds, we saw about four or five tricks. And right at the end there, it's unfortunate because it feels like you're, you're kind of winding it down. And then if you have a few seconds left, that really counts against you. There's Poppy, yeah, she left some time on the clock. At what point in these runs, 30 seconds, do you kind of start going, oh, am I done yet? <laughs> am I there? It, I guess it all depends on how you line it up and, and how much difficulty you have in store. Um, right there, she bailed on, a, she didn't bail, but, but she missed that 50-50. That is such a common mistake. And I mean, we do that all the time. You're as ramp skaters, your next skaters. Trick already, yeah, right? you're not considering the 50-50. Right, your back chart has gone on, and everything's over. Japan, Mami Tazuka, 17 years old, representing Japan. She made her VPS debut in 2018. 17 years old, skates with so much poise and confidence, and I love her style yeah, right there. The that was the, just, are... just screenshot that, and that's those everything right there. Those are iconic. I love it's, the back. It's foot. rare that you would do a trick like that and be recognized just by your silhouette. And she's yeah. got that going on. I just watch that back foot and I just wish so I wish I could do that. <laughs> I want that back foot on the Smith grind. So she leaves a lot of time on the clock, a mistake right there, but again, that would be most likely projecting into the next trick when you're not done with the current. Yeah, I think that everyone's just getting their jitters out too. This is the, these are the first runs. Everyone feels a lot of pressure and they'll get in their groove. So uh, no real scores of no. We have a 76.87, so a solid start for NDR Asp, but uh, nothing quite in the 80s yet, which is most likely what you're looking at to get the win. Representing Hawaii by way of NCS and now Oceanside, Jordan Barrett is in the park. She is a VPS veteran. She's had some huge finishes here, and she's looking for that big win to start the season. And uh, Jordan was confiding in me. She wasn't really sure about her strategy going into the semis. Should she show everything she has or should she save some? And I just told her she should build on each run. And it seems like she hasn't hold, held back at all. I mean, these, these skaters are so fortunate to basically pop out of the deck and anywhere they look, they go, oh, there's Hasoy. I can ask him a question. There's <laughs> Tony Hawk. Let me ask him. I, oh, that one, uh, I feel like that was one of her harder tricks too, the backside blunt. I, so she saved that for the end of her run. I, I think I recall her saying yesterday she wanted to finish with a banger, and if she can finish with that trick, that is gonna be solid. Yeah, and she looks pretty confident through that whole run, so I feel like she'll probably get that all within the next couple of, uh, of turns. So coming up next, uh, yeah, the score comes through, 61-4-3, currently in fifth place, but uh, she's going to want to delete that score from her line. Uh, one of the most technical skaters we have in the women's division here, Sakura Yosuzumi, she's 17 years old, Japanese skater, just hit the Vans Park Series hard last year, and she has not stopped. She's already had big finishes, and she is so fun to watch. You never know what she's going to do. She is. She makes all this stuff look really easy. And look at that, squatting a 360 out to a fast plant. And five out of Fagy, like she's got the mini ramp tricks, she's got the pool tricks right there. Cap Melon, I mean, this is all pretty serious right here. It's no wonder that she uh, qualified so well. Well, it's wild because just when I think she's a lip trick skater, she does an eight foot backside air yeah. and does it perfectly. She's got a mean backside ollie too. Oh my goodness, backside blunt, backside revert. I have not seen her make that in practice, not once. Yeah, she's, she's another one of those just really, you know, she gets here early, she, she rides hard, and she she hangs on to tricks, and that she pulls was, them out in the that final. That was super risky to try your first run of the finals, especially when your run's going so well right there, but she that's did so it. many tricks in this run, and the, 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 the link between trick to trick to trick, everything looks good. She used the whole park right there, you see that big flat wall with the, the pop-out section there. She, she touched every wall. That could be our winning run, honestly. Yeah, and I, I, you can tell the emotion right there that she knows she nailed it. 
waiting for this score to come through. It's, an, it's gonna be a biggie, and Kisa Nakamura now qualified first yesterday. Kisa Nakamura, another tough skater. I saw her with a, one of the worst slams I've seen of this season last year in Brazil. She came back the next contest. Look They're breaking this. her legs. She's starting out her. of the gate right there. Back to 180 to cab uh, Axel Stahl and then coming in fakie. All that stuff is serious mini ramp champ tricks. Nice, tail side rewrite. And this right here, that is frightening. Fakey to 50-50 over the spine, things can go bad very quickly in that scenario. Well, I think, you know, when you're watching this at home, you don't realize how big this park actually is. There are elements to it that look super fun, head high. The bowl section is deep. Everything has you flying so fast. That's not how you want to fall on a spine. That was a that was a risky move, especially for the last trick to try kickflip, kickflip disaster over the spine. Yeah, she's hurting. That was a a guy or a girl you don't want to fall like that on the spine. That's worst case scenario. She's, she's laughing, you know. Like I said earlier, she is super tough, and you said it earlier in the show. You know, she's super confident. For her. That was probably a B minus run. She's she's a lot better than that. And but you look at the score, she's already got an 82-0, so she's in second place. Sakura Yosuzumi now in the lead with an 88.63. So uh you nailed it there on the score. She is your leader. Now we reset. And all these skaters, they get those numbers fed to them right before they drop in. So now they know the score to beat, which is an 88.63 from Sakura. Indiara Asp is gonna have to just amplify everything a little bit in this run if she wants to catch Sakura Yosuzumi. She's capable too. She, I, I feel like she has more technical tricks that she can throw in there. Look at that, no comply tail slide. That was awesome. I mean, just that, it, 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 every little bit counts and that's gonna, that's gonna up her score from the last run. And the judges have really been hammering the point home. They wanna see you. If you're gonna do your airs, make them big. If you're gonna grind, make the grinds long. They wanna oh. see the flow of the park. Right there, she did a slop fast plant into a stale fish. Front tip didn't be, now, that was the exact same line she took last time, but she upped the difficulty of the tricks. And now we're gonna see if the judges really took notice of that. We've got a contest on our hands. So this is the finals for the first stop of the 2019 Vans Park Series. The women are in the park and they're ripping. This is Indiara Asp representing Florinopolis, Brazil. Talk about talent, Florinopolis itself. You could fill this whole contest with skaters from Florinopolis. <laughs> Score comes through, it's an 80. So Indiara Asp will now go. be in third place. So now what is she thinking, right? She's got to add tricks, add some difficulty, add height to her errors to get to that 88. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I, I haven't seen much other, uh, any other tricks that she's done in practice that would up that difficulty, but I hope so. This is Brighton Zoiner, Vance T. Brighter, riding for Frog Skateboards. Such a good style. I love seeing the fast plants. That's a lost art form. Look at that, that 360 is frightening right there. Oh man. I always kind of trip out on landing a trick, you know, from a 360 like that, where you know your feet are gonna be a little squirrely, and they're going straight into another trick. Well, not not just your feet, but your angle. Everything. Because at, at that point, you've gotta be, you know, she's going into an andrick there. She's gotta be going straight at the wall. So at this moment is when she decides, am I really aiming for the right place? And you can tell she tried to, correct it, but that killed her speed. And then she hung up. The back three over the hip like that too, it's almost like you're, you're doing more than a 360. Yeah, all the way around, enough. Lizzie Aramanto, Santa Monica, California, flying the Finnish flag as we get into the 2020 Olympic season. And Lizzie is just known for her flawless style. I would love, again, anyone would love to skate like Lizzie Aramanto. She is so fun to watch, so smooth. Oh no, those backside tail slides can get you. Uh, especially when you're not sliding for very long distance, it's very easy to catch your wheel on the wall and stop your momentum altogether, and that's what happened. She's got two more chances. Yeah, we give these skaters four, four chances, so you can, you know, you can have bails all the way up to that fourth run if you nail it on your fourth run. And we've seen her do that before. Poppy Star Olsen, representing Australia, turned 18 last year on the Vans Park Series. And 
that you know anytime you have a contest where there's cement and holes, she is going to come and most likely finish in the top five. She's yeah, that she, good and super consistent. She's got an arsenal of tricks too. Evil grinds, Andrex, Alley Oop. Even that, no one's really hitting that non uh, to bank. Nice, keeping out the tail a little bit. Styling it. And then she missed that 50-50 last time. So, oh no. Not really sure what, if she was trying to go to Smith grind there or if it was going to be a lip slide. You know, I, I was looking at her grip tip. I go, oh, it's, who's that on your grip? Is that your, your grandpa, your dad? She goes, hey. It's David Attenborough. <laughs> so she's got a shout out to uh, Sir David Attenborough on her grip tape. Uh, hey, any whatever inspiration you use, if I could skate like Poppy Star, I would put David Attenborough on my grip tape. He rules. All right, another score in the 60s. So a 68-73. Poppy Star also currently in fourth place. Coming up next, Mami Tazuka. She rides Sunny Skateboards, Vans team rider. No big results yet on the Vance Park Series, but the way she's been skating, as I throw the commentator curse at her. I feel like she was cursing in English right there. Did you see that? I think so. Which is fine. Appropriate. That's allowed <laughs> yes. on Vance Park Series. You know, we do take our cues with the parks that we have. California Skate Parks comes through, puts these parks up. You know, some of them are temporary, but most of them this year will be permanent right, parks. These are straight shout-outs to that DIY ethos. Okay, you know, this is what you would want in your hometown. And this is what we've seen built, you know, in places like Washington Street in San Diego, the ultimate DIY Burnside in Portland. FDR in Philly. FDR in Philly, and thankfully, more popping up all over the world. So we have pro parks and DIY parks, and we'll take all the skate parks we can get. Jordan Barrett, flying. Time goes by so fast when you're watching this. What's going on in the skater sets? Do they have an internal clock that kind of helps them get through this, their runs? I think she knows in terms of there where, you she go. where she's going and how much time is left. So it's really just more about her line, if she can stick to that line, which she has. Oh, no, that is, that's going to be a bummer because she was on the way up the wall when the time ran out, and that bail is going to count. But she made it further than any other run she's done. So I think it will be a pretty solid score, but she could have used that last wall. And this backside blunt is no joke right here. That trick is easy to fall on. I just look at her shoes, that tells me she's an absolute skate rat. She's been skating this thing <laughs> from dawn till dusk every day. And I know you skate with her a lot in San Diego, and you've been on a bunch of tours with her at demos. She's just an awesome human to have at a skate park. She, she gives her all in any situation. And she does it with a smile on her face. Yeah. Super positive, but I tell you, she is a competitor. She gets angry when she does big tricks, and, and we want that. We want her to come back swinging. This is Sakura Yosuzumi, your current leader, sitting on an 88.63. And I, I am curious how she's going to up her difficulty factor in this run, because that last run kind of had it all. We saw the subtlety there, but just a little kick of the foot. Do you call it an Ali North or a one foot? Uh, it depends on my audience. Okay. <laughs> the video game audience, you call it an Ollie North. I, I am responsible for naming it the Ollie North in the video game. I will take, I'll, I'll own that. Well, I want to tell you, uh, congratulations. 20 year anniversary of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was Nose blunt, up that thing. So she answered that, your question There you go, you. that's how she's gonna up the difficulty, right? The last run she did a disaster up there. Right there, she's going to nose blunt. Um, and still, uh, her feet were not in a prime position, and she still went for it. So uh, I, I love to see that sketchiness sometimes when you can pull it back. Just the commitment. So Sakura Yoshizumi is your current leader. That run is not going to factor into her final score line. She's sitting on an 88.63. Back to the video game conversation. A lot of these young skaters that we have in the finals today most likely grew up playing that game. Maybe they kind of they, they have a different approach. Anything's possible. Because I, I, think so. I, I, I think that back then when the game came out, there was a false sense of reality in terms of what tricks are possible. And now those tricks 
are happening all the time. Well, the, the, the new phrase that was coined was video game skateboarding. And now it's <laughs> yeah. basically just skateboarding. It's true. So this is Kisa Nakamura currently in second place. Kisa hitting every hip. Oh no. Yeah, she's having a hard time. Still hurt. Yeah, she had a pretty bad slam in that second run. She's still doing good enough to be in second place. So you have two Japanese skateboarders at the top right now. Midyar Ask in third, Jordan Barrett fourth, Poppy Star fifth, Lizzie Armanto sixth, Wright and Zoiner. Uncharacteristically, almost at the bottom in seventh place, Mami Tezuka, you know her being a rookie of the Vance Park Series. Gotta think she has a little bit of nerves going into this event. You know, a big crowd on hand. Of course, she's skating with some of her heroes. Your current standings, as I just mentioned, Sakura Yosuzumi with that 88.63. Tony, you've been in quite a few skateboarding contests in your career in skateboarding. The judges that we have on hand here, we have you know some street influence, some vert influence, some concrete influence uh, coming in the judges. I look at everything on this judging criteria board, you know, combination of maneuvers, emphasis on distance travel, speed, flow. Basically, the judges want to be blown away by your skateboarding. They want to be excited. They're skaters, they're skate fans. They want to see you put it all on the line. Yeah, there are there is all that criteria, but at the same time, there is just an overall impression of what happened as well. And sometimes that can override the, the technical aspects. But they've seen plenty of great skating in their day. They know the nuances of difficulty in each in each spot. And uh, so they have a healthy balance of, of what they should be scoring. I love how she does a little one foot there. Just enough so you can oh. see it. Oh, no. That is terrifying. That I rolled up to that thing and I go, no, this is this is not. There, there is a, a sweet spot of how much speed you need yeah. to go right there. Too much goes to the flat. Not enough is yeah. a hang up. Either one can be disastrous. Yeah, that's not for normal people. We'll leave that to the pros, like NDR asked. For that run, a 46-1-0. That, to me, almost looked like she just pulled it. It was almost a wild card. She just pulled it out of her hat. I and think that was her plan, it. though, because that was the only way she was going to sort of change Get up her line. Back into it. Yeah. All right, Brighton Zoyner, she's in seventh place. Remember the oh, score no. to beat. Just, okay, what I was talking about, that 50-50, you're not focusing on it, the front truck doesn't get on, and it's over. And and from you know, from, from a, a veteran vert skater and ramp skater, it happens all the time. You're already on the next you're wall. You're already on your the mind. next wall, and suddenly you just see it fall away from no. you. No. So the whole field right now is uh, a little bit rattled from Sakura Yosuzumi with that huge 88.63. See if Lizzie Armanto can gather it up here right now. She's in sixth place. Oh, changing it up there. Front side never on the big wall. That wall is huge. What is it, 14 feet? I think I caught it. I, I enjoy that aspect of this course, to be honest. Yeah. Because uh, coming from a bird skater, these these bowls, yes, they have vert, but they're not truly a vert wall that you can do sort of veteran tricks that we look for as vert skaters, and we have it here. Oh, Ooh, I like that? that trick. Backside Bertelman. That's probably going to be the only one we see in this contest. Oh, my goodness, her feet are all over the place. Yeah, stay on. <laughs> oh, that was about to be wow. a potential Sakura Yosuzumi beating score. And I love you can just see. You know, she's escalating as she goes. Things are getting faster and faster. And that start right there, that was insane. Yeah, that thing has some serious vert on it. So <laughs> four, uh, four feet of vert. Yeah. So what do you uh, what do you tell Lizzie Armanto before a demo or before a, a run? Do you, do you do you ever give her advice? I don't, I'm not gonna tell her anything. She doesn't already know at this point. She's she's a veteran but at this. If I had to go say something to her right now, it would be stay on. Yeah. Just, just stay on. Just stay on. And, and she was. She was about to stay on. Whoa. Poppy Star Olsen now. Poppy looks like she didn't quite get the speed she wanted, but she's back in the deep part and uh, back in the groove. I like that line kind of sticking to the walls. The surf that style. That alley too. That, that one, it looks simple, but that's hard. You can't see where you're going. You're landing on a bank and trying to get speed out of it. 50. Oh, switch it up with the 5-0 into a lip slide. There it is. There's the run she wanted. That's what she's been going for this whole time. Did you see the relief. The crowd goes wild for Poppy Star Olsen. One of the winningest 
female skateboarders out of Australia ever. She is your Oceanic Continental Champion for two years in a row. That means she's going straight to Salt Lake City, but not before she does some damage here on the Vans Park Series Global Tour. That could put her in third place, maybe even second. Ooh, 75-83. Wow. What do you think the judges did uh, not see in that run that they saw with Kisa or Sakura? I'm not sure. I, I think that uh, maybe they were looking for more technical tricks. There's our 2017 champion, Nora right, Vasconcelos. One of the uh, shocking Suka. upsets from yesterday. Mami Tezuka, relative newcomer, started her uh, Vance Park Series band. There's that. Just, I can watch that all day. That back foot. I can watch it all day long. When you see her fold up that back foot like that, that is all style. Ooh, and those backside smiths can get you. She's, she's back in the groove. 22 seconds, stay on, Mami. No! I'm just stuck talking. I've been amazed that when I watch a lot of these girls, Frontside feeble seems to be a go-to trick, and that is not easy. Oh, Your yeah. feet can come off so easily on that, or you can catch the coping and just end up falling in backwards. Look at that. Just, again, screenshot it. That's how you do a Smith <laughs> grind. That is, Around the corner, too. It's perfect. So again, to reiterate, the judges want you to see, they don't want to see back and forth, no offense. They don't want to see bird style skateboarding. They want to see carving long grinds. They want to see you use the corners and use the curves. And I think Mommy had a great start doing just that in that last run. Well, we've seen it a little bit in the past, you know, just trick, 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 trick without doing a lot of big carves. The carve is key at Vance Park Series. Yeah, and the grinds too. It is amazing we're in 2019 and we're seeing boneless ones on a regular basis. Yeah. Nice. Jordan has a good stale fish too. That one is uh, right there. I mean, that was that's a nice. full serve bottom turn. That can go under appreciated. Here we go. Jordan with the backside blunt. She's got to stay on the rest of this run here. Three seconds. One more trick. Backside air. She's got it. Bam. All right. Now we're talking Jordan Barrett. That was the run she wanted. She's hyped. The crowd is feeling it. Jordan Barrett skates for the full 40 seconds. That could put her metal metal contention. I feel like that's a top three run. But I spoke too soon last time, so I'll just wait and see. Here's your replay of Jordan Barrett. Again, using the uh, full time is key. So 73.73. You know, I'm just, if I'm trying to analyze that run versus Indiara, Kisa, and Sakura, with Indiara, I, I, I feel like the difference was speed. She was going so fast. And Maybe Sakura was just tricks, technicality. Well, so there are a couple setup walls, and it seems like that's really working against you if you're just going up to do a 50 50 for a setup. That wastes a lot of time. Yeah. And the judges really have, and they, they tell our, they tell the field, they want you to see, they want you, you, you to use every, every, every time you're going up to a wall, they want to see a trick. I don't like to see a lot of pumping or setup like tricks. Oh, Sakura. That was crazy. This is the same run we saw. This is, this is her winning run so far. So we're going to see if she switches it up at all. Oh, here's, she can see that nose one. No. Wow. So that was basically the same run. Oh, what happened there? Something What did awesome. we miss? Something really cool. I, I'm guessing by the body motion, Blunt. it was a blunt revert. No, she was not blunt revert. It might have been a big spin or a disaster or something nose blunt. I don't know. Well, she's hyped. The crowd's behind her. Need a better angle on that. That was yes. uh, the oh, back that foot. foot. That foot was oh. in the danger zone right there. It was there. terrifying. Here's that last trick. Oh, there you go. Yep. Told ya. Oh, big spin disaster. She, I would love to invite Sakura to a mini ramp party. She probably has a <laughs> thousand tricks. And, I I, and again, I love that she can mix that with big backside airs in the deep end. If I may though, what was her score on that one? Uh, it was not a keeper, 83.3. Uh, yeah, so that big spin disaster is not as hard as the backside blunt uh, revert. So I agree with the judges on that one. Yeah, I still feel like her score is warranted to be full eight points above anyone else. But here goes Kisa Nakamura. 
Whoa. She, she can figure out how to get speed out of relatively nothing. I love this fakey 50 50 over the spine. She's the only skater going over the spine. So scary. Look at that. Oh, no. Just the grab. That, that injury on her first run has really set her back. Yeah. You can see she's, she's feeling it. Gosh, that was close, too. She only had about 10 more seconds to go. But everything kind of started to slip right there. With just that added little sketch. So as we get now into uh, our fourth runs, Tony, this is where we could possibly see that first wall rebate or first trick rebate, as we like to call it. Here are your standings for now. Sakura Yosuzumi setting the pace with an 88.63. What is it about Sakura skating that has the judges so fired up? She, she, she did the hardest tricks, used every part of the course, and kept her speed up. I mean, it's gonna be hard to, to beat that first run she did, even for her, I think. All right, here we go. Final runs for Indiara Asp, representing Florinopolis, Brazil, currently in third place. Hot on this tail drop. Oh, that is scary. Here we go. Nice. I guess right. that's gonna be her first that's trick. That's her first trick. No, no need for the first trick here rebate. Here we go. It's a good start, though. Oh, that's a hell of a way to start a run. Now she just needs to stay on. Yeah, this will up her score. If she, if she can do the rest of her routine that she had on the run she made, this will be a better score. Nice. That little one foot at the end. Oh, no complete tail slide. Layback error was really one of the first errors in skateboarding, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That, there's that frontside people I was talking about. And backside Smith. Here we go. Five seconds. Coming to a stop there. Oh, my goodness. She had no speed, no speed going into that wall plant and still went for it and then took a heavy slam. All skateboarder right there. Yeah, she is. She, she basically lives that Thrasher magazine ethos. Skate hard, slam, get back up, keep skating hard. Jeff Grosso told me that uh, she, that one contest, he told her that maybe she should lose the layback air. So they got, you know, it's kind of an old school trick, it's kind of easy. And she literally said, F you. Yeah. If there's anyone to tell that's, it to, that's the guy to tell it to. Oh, he probably lo loves her even that much more. Absolutely. Stand your ground. We do have, you're, you are going to be on a show with Jeff Grasso in, pretty soon, actually, and about six more skaters. Time out with Jeff Grasso. Sorry, Tony Hunt. We can talk about the benefits. Lay back air. Lay back air. It must be cool for you and Jeff, Cab, and Hosoi to see these skaters do tricks that were invented 20 years oh, before they were born. It is pretty cool, especially when someone digs out something like that where it, the layback guys kind of went underappreciated, kind of made fun of, and then she comes back with them on the hardest terrain. Well, that's gonna be it for Brighton Zoyner. You see, that was her third wall. And again, this is uh, kind of shocked right now. Only a 64 is her highest score. She's usually that skater that is super consistent. But that's gonna be it for Brighton Zoyner. Here we go, Lizzie Armanto is in sixth place. She needs an 88.64 for first. We'll see what she has here on the first trick. She's gonna go back to that front end invert. Yep, there you go. If, if I could do that trick, I would just do that all day. <laughs> yeah. On the biggest wall. Nice. And Lizzie knows, she's just gotta, she's gotta ride it out. She's gonna stay on here. Nice, backside tail slide. That's so hard with not that much speed. Backside boneless. Whoa, kind of grinding off the edge there. <laughs> I love the, who's doing backside birds? Lizzie. Oh, be able to fake it out. Oh man, right into the transition. Oh, that's, that was a bad slam right there. It's the one part about Park Series I don't like, slams. And that's the thing, there's so many transitions here that if you start to fall, it's very likely you're gonna fall into an upward transition and we call that the bug on a windshield. Now right there, she didn't quite straighten out. Ugh, that's a hard, that's a hard slam. And at an awkward angle, Lizzie Armanto, tough as nails, she's up, walking out of the park under her own power. 
Gosh, that's a bummer too, because that run was so good. I was really surprised to see her to try the feeble to fake it. I have not seen her try that at all in practice. That's why a lot of us don't do feeble to fakies, because of a slam like that. You're so twisted yeah. up. You're, you're not, there's never going to be an easy slam out of that trick. And always fun to uh, take your run after a big slam like that. Poppy Star Olsen now has to put that out of her head and get things rolling. She's currently in fourth place. She needs about five points of an increase to get herself up to that top three. Here we go, Poppy Star Olsen. She'll shake it off. She knows she's got to up the difficulty factor here. Oh, there we go. Smith going to 50 50. Where she used to do it, Smith trying to uh, lip slide. Ooh. Now these walls count for a lot here. It's a lot of time traversing the whole course. There you go, all the way up to forward slide. This is pretty much what we saw last time though. Eight seconds left. Oh, there we go. A little bit different. Okay, so this is this run. Oh no! There's some irony in uh, lip slides on mini ramps are actually harder than lip slides on vert walls because you don't have time to get your your feet and to get your wheels in position to come in. It's very easy to drag your wheels and come to a stop the way she did. Well, I would say Sir David Attenborough would be proud of Poppy Star Olsen. The grip tape shout out. It worked. She got a 75.83. That last run a 69.20. So I mean, fourth place among the best female park skaters in the world to kick off the 2019 Vans Park Series is pretty solid. Mami Tazuka. So far, Mami in 45 and 11 and 51. So kind of a sporadic finishes here. We'll see if she can stay on till the end. Yeah, we saw that same fall last time. The Smith grind would get you. Uh, and that was her second trick technically speaking so no rebate there uh, what, what i did like is her ability to just kind of run out of that trick that's a 10 foot bowl yeah. she just kind of cruised out of it made that look really easy so we're stoked to have mommy tezuka with us for the 2019 Vance park series here we go this is a big run for jordan barrett she's got a 73.73 .73. She has an 88.64 in her. So Jordan is not worried about the uh, first trick rebate. She's going straight to the line that she wanted to do. Great smooth She seems like she's a great student of skateboarding. Yeah, she definitely uh, takes a lot of influences, tries to learn a lot of different styles. She skates with a mellow crew. Tony Hawk, Steve Caballero, Kevin Staub. Are you saying mellow or old? Ripping crew, is what I'm saying. Oh, there we go, backside ball. Does. There's a lot that can go wrong on a backside so, ball. There's, there's yeah, especially on a vert wall. I've seen some of the worst slams on backside ball. It's really easy to catch your feet. Absolutely. Well, the boneless is uh, the front side boneless. Kind of a, a staple of Vans Park series. I wouldn't say it's super difficult, but when you do them right, if you do them in the in the vein of Grant Taylor, they're going to look awesome, and right. the judges are going to like. All right. So Jordan Barrett comes through the 69.53, only good enough for fifth place for now. So uh, our next rider is going to be Sakura Yosuzumi, your current leader. She has an 88.63, a 69.77, an 83.03. Solid numbers across the board. She's got more for us. Feels like she's got this run so dialed it's boring for her. Oh no, oh gosh. Yeah, when your foot, so when you put your foot on your board after a trick like that, and the foot's hanging off too much, it gives you no leverage to turn towards your heels. And it's usually a, a fall like that. It's usually much worse, though. Yeah, she dodged a bullet for sure. But she had already, you know, the damage had already been done in 88.63 on her first run. She's so tech. She's just, she's a little, yeah, I love that. She's a little assassin. Frontside pivot, frontside rock. Almost a Smith grind to frontside rock. Well, she's smiling for now. But he said Nakamura who finished first in the semifinals has been on fire, but unfortunately an early fall on her first run, her second run has kind of hampered her. We'll see if she can 
Oh, look at that. Cab to Axel Stahl to backside revert in. Seven tricks in one. What happened? She's, too, she's in too much pain. Oh, man, that is unfortunate. It was such a strong start right there. And it was even, the thing she was doing there was harder than any run she's taken. She's going to have to settle for second. She might have actually started to. Uh, Hold up, we got to call your name. Hold up. Yeah, she started too early. She's, she's too psyched. You have to wait until Tim O'Connor on the deck calls your name and starts your time. So she just put herself through some pain for. Uh, Wow, and I know how tough Kisa is. If she's in that much pain, she definitely, uh, she definitely took a took a hard slam. Some confusion there on her starting. Yeah, you know, er, er, earlier I said, quote unquote, off season. There's no off season in skateboarding, so we see skaters coming into Park Series carrying injuries, you know, slamming in qualifying, slamming in practice. So. You know, I, I wouldn't say you know, of the entire field, nobody's at 100%. Is the skateboarder really ever at 100%? <laughs> On occasion. But sometimes those challenges work to your favor because you're pushing so hard to get through the pain or the challenge that it makes you go that much better, go that much bigger. And sometimes maybe not so in your head. Yeah, and, and focused on, oh, I hope I don't fall. It's just like, get, get through the injury, get through the injury. All right, so Kisa Nakamura restarts, 40 seconds on the clock. Oh my goodness, that was incredible. Yeah. Hey. Wow. No feet on the ground. So cap, cap to Axel Stahl, backside reaver in. Look at this, she's just back in the mix. Yeah, sometimes if you can get a near escape like that. Nice. It can give you the motivation. It can get you fired up. All right, is this an 88? 0.64. 10 seconds. Nice hand direct coming over. And right here, this 5-0 on the spine is no joke. There is very little room for error on that trick. Ooh, hurricane kick yeah. disaster. Oh, watch it out. That is going to be close. I am not calling it, but that's going to be close. I love that look on Sakura's face, like, oh no, what did I just see? So, her very first run, she did the splits on the spine, as you can see from her obvious pain. And then she pushed through that pain in the next two runs. In her final run, she overcame all of that. Look at this, kick flip disaster and just certain death with the back truck, does it anyway. Oh, the last trick was just after time. A fan and crowd favorite, but the judges basically have to take that out of their uh, of their score line. What I love though is to see a skater go right back to where they ate it and, right. and do the same trick, and conquer that immediately. I mean, if anybody fell on that spine, you wouldn't go back and skate it. Like there you go. So, so her score was almost the same as her first run when she missed that spine trick. I think what slowed her down was that sort of wobble on the cab to, to axle stall. She ended up going to extra revert and losing a little bit of speed, and that made it so she couldn't get to the last trick in time. It was literally one second. That's it. I mean, all she needed was, uh, yeah, half a second more, and that trick would have counted. I don't know if it would have beat her, though. I don't know if it would have beat Sakura, honestly. I mean, well, you look at the score line. Sakura Yosuzumi with 88.63. Kisa Nakamura, a kickflip. Disaster over the spine. It's not going to add eight points. I don't think it's going to add eight, eight points. You're right. Still a solid finish. An eighty point two three for Kisa Nakamura. So she increases just a little bit on her fourth run. I just got to give her. You know, you got to give her credit for coming back after that brutal slam on her second run. So with that. I mean, Japanese skateboarders reigning supreme here. First and second. Sakura Yosuzumi, Kisa Nakamura, Indiara Asp. A heavily stacked field of eight of the world's best female park skaters came here, did battle and at the end of the day. It's Sakura Yosuzumi with an 88.63. Nothing like dropping the score of the day on your first run. Absolutely, it's way ahead. So, like we said, it might have been close with Kisa, but I don't think that even with that run, counting every trick, it would have it would have made it in the first place. But it was uh, it was exciting. And it's really close. Look at that. Between second and third, 0.23 points. 
But look at, I mean, you look at the, the lineup we have here. Mommy Tezuka, a, a newcomer to Vance Park Series. Brighton Joyner in seventh. Before we get to this entire lineup, let's go down to the deck. We've got Chris Pastris. Thank you, boys. And wow, what a huge win. Amazing runs. So we've got a translator here for some Japanese. We want to know, describe what this win means for Sakura here at stop number one. She can speak in Japanese, right? Okay. No, well, you, you translate uh, for her. Yes. Uh, she has kind of proud. She has kind of proud. She can win the next game. Okay. Because she, she won this game. And what is her favorite thing about the Vance Park Series Tour? Vance Park Series Tour, what is the most favorite thing about the Vance Park Series Tour? It's kind of atmosphere. So many people are crying like this. Amazing. And does she want to say anything to their, her fans back in Japan watching? Congratulations once again. Sakura Yakazumi, amazing win here. Put your hands together for Sakura. Huge win. Vans Park Series, stop number one, 2019. Congratulations, Sakura. Well, we're having a little bit of deja vu here. When we started Park Series in 2018, Sakura Yosuzumi took the win in her first ever Vans Park Series event, our first stop last year. So Sakura Yosuzumi basically carrying on where she finished off in 2018, looking like a potential threat with skating like that to win every contest. It, I mean, yeah, it looked, it looked simple for her. There was almost no effort involved. She, it's like she had those runs so dialed that she was kind of bored of them. And sometimes that's what it takes is that sort of that sort of confidence and that strategy. And it looked like, you know, if we had two, three more runs, she could have just kept going, kept just adding little elements to that run to even get those scores bigger. So an 88.63, the benchmark set by Sakura Yosuzumi. Uh, a heavy finals there right there. We kind of got a little bit of everything. We had some just brutal slams, some high speed, incredible skating. This is Sakura Yosuzumi. You know, just that, that start right there. The backside air on the Solid, big yeah. wall. And then she does that 360, squatted it out every time, but then right into a fast plant. <laughs> Even though, it, and this right here, that was the, that was the clinch. Backside nose blunt, backside revert, first run, last trick. That was set it up for the win. Third place finisher, Indiara Asp. Again, just superb style. Silky smooth, super fast. Great trick selection. She is the complete package. Old school and new school. And then Kisa Nakamura, the survivor. <laughs> yes. Just coming coming back from this right here. Cab the cab axe stall to backside reaver. It's really right a, back in. a great mix of finesse and power. Uh, there you have it, your top three finishers for stop number one here on the Vans Park Series 2019 Women's Tour. Uh, the women right there, I'm not even going to say warming it up for the men because they just destroyed this place. Yeah, that was an exciting final. I, I hope that the men's final even gets close to that level of excitement and, and tension. Well, what I'd like to see here is our veterans, Jordan Barrett, Lizzie Armanto, Brighton Zoyner, and Poppy Star Olsen. They've got some catching up to do with Sakura Yosuzumi and Kisa Nakamura in the mix. They gotta be uh, maybe going back to the drawing board a little bit to figure out things that they can do to come back at the next stop and get themselves back into contention. They were the perennial top three finishers for their first three years of Vance Park Series. It would have been great though to, to see every competitor have one solid run so we could really gauge how close it was. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break, but we'll be back with more action. Of course, one of our favorite parts of the show, Time Out with Grosso, we'll be right back.
what's up everybody? We are back in Shanghai, the Vans Park Series, and I am joined by legendary skater, my fellow peer, and also extremely opinionated talk show host, Jeff Grosso. How you doing, Jeff? I'm, I set you up. I'm setting you up so you're supposed to talk now. Oh, surf music's dead. Um, Welcome to Suffer Camp, my friend. It's good to be here. <laughs> Are you having fun here? Yes, I'm having a fabulous time. I just uh, told a funny story about uh, Indiara, who is out here. We just saw the women compete. Yes. She uh, was the doing Dwayne layback Peters. airs in her runs. The Dwayne Peters of the female bowl skating competition. Yeah, so I, 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 I related that story that uh, <laughs> you told her to not do layback airs, and what did she tell you? She told me to fuck off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Which is probably exactly what you needed to hear. Yes. Yes, to totally. earn your respect. That's what you got to do to earn, yeah. earn Jeff's respect. I, Just I, push back at him. I love Indy. I, I met her at Pedro's. She was this tall, something like that. I gave her an anti-hero hat. She still has it. <laughs> and she still does lay back airs. Viva Brazil. Perfect. It's perfect. Totally. What, what, uh, what, what advice would you give any of these girls had you gone up to them before these finals? Um, I told Brighton to rip or I'd blacken her eye. That didn't work. Um, I told Lizzie to go fast. Um, that ended up biting her in the butt, literally. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, uh, that was about it. <laughs> and I told Nora I was really bummed that she wasn't skating today. Oh, yeah, that was unfortunate. She got, uh, that was kind of a big upset going into the finals. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Semis. you know, but somebody always gets torched, so yeah. welcome to skateboard contest. When you see the girls, are, are any of them, do you identify with any of them where you see like, oh, I kind of know, like, I, I feel that right there. Totally, I know what that's all, the like. all the time. Yeah. Like, whatever, I'm a skate nerd, so I sit and, I, I love this shit, so, yeah, man, um, there's, there's a lot of high drama in skateboard contests if you know where to look at, you know, for right. it. And yeah, I, I, I dig the shit. So, um, yeah, you know, well, I, mean, we, I, I we were skating together in the 80s, and, and it seemed like our biggest, biggest thing in the world, right? We went to these contests, ASPO events, NSA events. It seemed like there was nothing else that mattered, but in the, in the grand scheme of things, they were very small comparatively, especially compared to this kind of event. Yes. And the pressure was intense. Yes. And I just feel like now the stakes are so much higher. These people are training. Well, yes, there's a lot of money on the line. Skateboarding's big time. Do you think that's Thanks the motivation? Thanks to you and them goddamn video games. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to throw it back at me. Do you no. think that's the motivation, though, is the money, or do you think it's the, no, just they're just, the love for it, the success, yeah, the Olympics? Just, what is it? They're just skaters, man. They're, they're just a bunch of rad kids who skate, and... And it's rad that they've got an ecosystem to flourish in now, uh, you know, with the, the little bowl contests and stuff. And, and they're just going for it. Just they like we, They don't care. I mean, the money and stuff is nice. It helps them to... But even for us, that, that seemed incidental, thing. right? When we were growing up, the, the money was... Well, no. there was no money anyway. Yeah, But it no. was kind of exciting to get 150 bucks in oh, first place. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money for this whole series. So yes. everything's changed. $800,000. That's it. And we're excited to be I here. I could get in some trouble. <laughs> All right. Men's finals are coming up. Thanks, Jeff. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you, too. <laughs>
never settle. China then part series. This is where it all goes down. And we're back. That's right. This is the 2019 Vans Park Series. We are live from Shanghai, China. New parks, new places, new faces. I'm Chris Cote, and I'm standing right next to one of those new faces on the Vans Park Series, the one and only Mr. Tony Hawk. Welcome to Park Series, Tony. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be in Shanghai for the first time, too. First time in Shanghai. First time, yep. First time here. I know you've been to a couple Park Series events. First time calling it. We just watched the women go into the finals, absolutely destroying this park. They did leave it up right, just enough for our men's finals to start. Absolutely, it was it was, it was was down to the wire at the end too, and I feel like that's probably what's gonna happen here with these guys that keep challenging each other, keep stepping up their difficulty, um, and we've seen them flying around all weekend. Absolutely, this is gonna be insane. This is gonna be a, a, an incredible tour. Let's, uh, let's dive into a little bit. We're starting off here in Shanghai, China. Relatively new to the skateboarding scene, but I tell you, we're already seeing some absolute rippers come from this area and from all over in China. From here, we're gonna go down to Brazil, a hotbed of skateboarding, San Paulo, Brazil. We built an insane Vans Park Series custom park there last year. So we're gonna go back to that incredible skate park and utilize it and uh, that is gonna be just an epic show. And then we're off to Montreal, which has a strong skate scene in Canada. That's kind of one of the central places in Canada for uh, park skating, really. And uh, I've done some demos there in like, the last couple of years. Excitement levels are gonna be high. Then we go to Paris, France, European stop. Paris has been into skating since the 80s. I'd say some of the biggest crowds have, that I've ever done demos in front of have been in Paris. So it's gonna be great to see this kind of action come to a beautiful city like that. Yeah, and we're going to wrap it all up in Salt Lake for the Vans Park Series World Championships. That's where we will crown a men's and women world champion of park skating, September 6th and 7th. We've got a long way to go, a lot of miles to travel to get to Salt Lake, and it all starts here in Shanghai, China. So to get us kicked off, let's go down to the deck. We've got the one and only Dune, Chris Pastris with us. What's up, buddy? Thank you, boys. The energy down here on the deck is insane. Practice is going bonkers. And the big storyline here for the men's final, Tom Shar unfortunately, out with an ankle injury. We're sending you healing, healing vibes, Tom. We miss you out here. There's also uh, no Pedro Burroughs this year, no Oscar Rosenberg, and that opens up the field for a bunch of new names. Roman Pabich is just dominating. 
won our semifinals. We got Luis Francisco. We've got Patrick Ryan got second in semifinals. And really, once again, like I said, with the women's, any eight of these skaters could win this thing. So it's anybody's game. It's going to be super exciting. And we're, we're hyped to kick this thing off. Well, for the last three, four days, the men have been taken to this park like just animals, you know, to the slaughter. We've seen some incredible practice sessions. The preliminary rounds were epic. And then we got to the semifinals. That's where the showdown really began. Let's take a look back at what we saw yesterday in the qualifiers and semifinal rounds. Thank you to the boys at Thrasher Magazine for basically just putting together that that that, that video part was enough. That is, I think that is that's a video uh, part right there. Should we just wrap it up? Absolutely. Or what uh, <laughs> what an opening round we had for the uh, for the men's semifinals and finals. Uh, uh, Josh Borden, got to give it up. I mean, he was the skater favorite. So uh, thank you to that, all uh, of our skaters there. The sort of Miller flip over the spine. Incredible. I don't think we're going to get to see one of those in the finals. We got big cheers there for all of our skaters in the qualifiers and semifinals. And uh, two guys that were just fanning out super hard from the deck, getting the crowd fired up and getting our skaters ready to skate. We have Tony Alva and Christian Asoy. Hey, guys. I'm down here with the legend of legends, the godfather of skateboarding, the one who Perth, what we are doing here. The first Frontside Air, I believe, is over 45 years ago. Tony, you must be blown away at how far skateboarding has come since that day that you first did that Frontside Air. Tell me what you're thinking. I mean, it's amazing to be here. I love Shanghai. The skateboarding scene here has grown and just flourished in the last 10 years since I started coming here. And yeah, just to be here and be a part of this thing is, uh, it's a momentous part of like the history of skateboarding, as well as a great experience for myself. So. I'm proud of skateboarding, but I'm also connected to it, you know, in a way of like, you know, we're bringing this from California to the rest of the world. And to start right here with this series in Shanghai is really, really cool. And I, I think it's going to be great this year. We're going to have another really great year. So, yeah, we premiered your movie, The Tony Alva Story. And uh, I, I thought it was an amazing event. Also, the love letters to China. Um, how do you feel about your movie? And uh, how's your experience since you've been here on this trip? Well, it's great. I mean, you know, it's cool because it involves other people other than myself. I mean, because it, it brings in the guys that I've sponsored, such as yourself. And it tells our story from a different perspective, you know, than maybe some of the other films that we've done. So, you know, skateboarding's rocking, man. Well, we're here on the lip. It's right before the men's. Who do you got for first place? Do you got a pick? Oh, in practice, I mean, Corey's just killing it. But there's, there's, a, <laughs> lot of, there's a lot of guys that are on. Wooten, I mean, the list goes on. I, I really can't say. I mean, hey. 
There's so many guys yeah. ripping that we can't even say, yeah, but <laughs> we're going to see it right now. Back to you guys up there in the booth. Thank you. Oh, so hyped to have Hasoy and uh, Alva here. And really, if you think about it, I mean, this is the fundamental of skateboarding. It's concrete and skateboarding wheels, and you just go fast, and you rip. And that's how it all started. Of course, more bells and whistles here now. But uh, as we get into this thing, we like to make our picks. Those two guys, well, they didn't put themselves out on a limb, did they? They kind of just said everybody's ripping. I'm going to throw you out there on the ledge. Tony, who wow. is your pick to um, watch? You know what? I really enjoy watching Luis Francisco during practice because he's got a really good blend of old school and new school tricks. Uh, he does something on every single wall. Even when he's just going from point A to point B, he, he makes it a trick. And he's going fast the entire time. So. He's not up in the qualifying. He didn't qualify that well, but I feel like he could bump his way up if he sticks to it. Yeah, he is a he is a he is a little powerhouse, a little terminator. Super fun to watch. Well, my pick is going to go with uh, a guy who has been absolutely ripping this park, Patrick Ryan. I love to watch a skater that just looks weightless, and then when he gets back into it, is powerful. He's got kind of the best of both worlds and he actually had to take a semester off school to come compete in this event. He asked his teachers for permission. They said no. He said, you know what? I'm going. I'll see you soon. You can't fire me. I quit. Exactly. And uh, he's an absolute powerhouse. Super fun to watch. Can't wait to see what Patrick Ryan does here in the finals. Now let's go back down to the deck. Chris Pastris, who do you have to watch today? What's up, fellas? Solid picks there. I'm going with Ocean City, Maryland's Roman Pabich. He's got the perfect blend of old school and new, stu new school tricks, like a lot of these young cats. He's super creative, and he's got unique lines. He's got great style, so I'm rooting for Roman Pape. It's super fun to watch. Yeah, and I should add there, Patrick Ryan has a perfect uh, mix of old school and new school tricks, which is really, <laughs> that's what you have to have to compete here at the Vance Park Series. Our format is uh, the same as we saw for the women. These skaters get four runs each. 40 seconds run, you skate until you fall, or for that full 40 se seconds. We brought eight skaters from the semifinals. In the fourth and final run, you have a first trick rebate. The clock will reset if you fail, but if you make it, you could be on your way to a winning, a winning run. The judges are looking for the best one run. You can do your same run four times, but the judges are gonna look for that one shining moment. I think that's a great format. Actually, uh, when from being a competitor, that was always much more of a bonus to just get that one shining run because sometimes if it's best two out of four, you had the outst most outstanding run, but combined you didn't make it that way. So I, I really enjoy that format. Well, here's your men's finals. Unfortunately, to start us off, Carl Berglund was swinging for the fences yesterday, went down hard. He did qualify, but he will not be skating today. But don't worry, we've got Luis Francisco, Vincent Matheron, Patrick Ryan, CJ Collins, Curran Caples is in the finals, Keegan Palmer, and Roman Pabich. I'm seeing a lot of young faces up there, Tony. This is a whole new crop of finalists for Vans Park Series. It's great. I love I love that the, the, they're a whole new generation. Um, it's crazy to think that someone like Pedro's, who I, Pedro Barros, who I think is relatively All young, right, is a veteran. Off, <laughs> yeah, I'm just super old, so I have a, a different gauge. Well, to start us off, he is 15 years old. This kid is pure punk rock skateboarding. I believe he got his first tattoo when he was 13. That tells you something about this guy, CJ Collins, to start us off here in the men's finals. Oh wow. my god. He realizes this is not the uh, first ball rebate, right? Yeah, he doesn't. Look at that huge indie nose bone. He's lying around. CJ has become famous for kick clipping into scary situations That was like the scariest that. one. Oh, look at that. No comply up to tail on the box. Wow. 19 seconds left. He's already filled this run with tricks. Oh my, wow, that was a backside nose blunt, the deep end of the ball. Oh, what happened there? Is that a lay shove it or a kick flip? I don't know. Oh, backside blunt, backside three, kidding me. This is, he knows this is his first run, right? He gets four, four chances. All right, setting the tone here. That's how you want to see it. He basically just drew that line in the sand, daring the rest of the field to cross it. An incredible start for CJ Collins, 15 years old out of Anaheim, California. Vans rider, toy machine skateboards, and that so is... So frightening. That is crazy, that's crazy. Don't try that at home. That could have been tragic. Don't try that at your home park. That could have been tragic out of the gate. And look at this, backside nose blunt. Well, think of what the judge is looking for, right? Hard tricks, big combinations. I think they were looking for that. That, 
just that, that whole run. If that's there was a dictionary yeah, yes. of judging, that's what they wanted to see. The score comes through in 84-33. That is how you want to start the final. CJ Collins with a heavy, heavy run to start us off here. Coming up next, 18 years old from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Luis Francisco, Tony Hawk's pick. Here you go. Here we go. Boneless right there. You know, sometimes he gets up so high that he throws a nose mode in it. Look at this. Over the pyramid, over the volcano. I don't know what we call that. Oh, one foot. All the speed. Every time he lands, too, he's landing super high. Aerial flip, Indy over the hill. I mean, that's not a mini ramp trick. And then a huge of Indy. Thanks, Brian. Look at this. Side 40 over the hill. Oh, he got the memo that CJ Collins put out. There we go. I'm, like right there, that's a filler trick. A giant front side one foot. And then 360. Wow, that was a Hello, uh, oh, skateboarders. We've got a final on our hands. Two insane runs to start us off. Well, put so your thankful judge, put your... <laughs> yeah, I'm thankful to be here and not in the judges' area. That is a hot seat for sure. Look at that perfect kickflip indie over the volcano hip. Now, are the judges looking for every detail, the landings, how you flip your board, where you grab? Are they looking for every I, little detail that you're doing? I think it, it depends on if it, if it brings you to the next trick. So if he had landed that in a sloppy way but still kept his speed up, it wouldn't matter. Right. Yeah, I don't want to get over technically here, but if yeah. it does impede your progression and, it, and slow you down, they're probably going to take some points away. Right. 81.07 to start us off. Here we go, current Caples. A crowd favorite, 23 years old from Ventura, California. Oh, man. Well, you're in one of the ultimate surf skate talents. He really and does look like he's surfing. Yeah. He's kind of the Chris Miller of this generation. Oh, gosh, that's a great compliment. And I, I believe that, you know, Surfing, as different as it is, will help current in these events just because of the flow, the way you pump down a wave. I mean, it's really similar to this. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's struggling to keep his speed up because he really does know the wall and how to use his body. It doesn't look like he's overarching it. Well, this entire Vance Park series has been heavily inspired by Marseille Skate Park, one of their original parks with all hips, spines, and the whole deal that we look at today. This guy grew up there from Marseille, France. This is Vincent Matheron, an absolute ruler of the spine, but we'll see how he can use the whole park here. There is something to be said, too, about skating a park that's kind of imperfect. Like, Marseille has a lot of goal on that 360 flip. Marseille has a lot of kinks and, and walls that aren't perfect, and so when he's throwing at this, this is like a luxury. Yeah, super smooth, I mean, Everything in this park is perfect. It's the same as we grew up skating the the, the bowl the pool parks of Southern California, uh, Del Mar, Upland, Whittier, and they weren't great, but that's all we had. And then once we were presented with something that was great, oh wow, this is easy. It was yeah, it, tricks became limitless. It's like when uh, you see skaters from the East Coast of uh, the United States riding on that rough ground. They get to California, they say, well, this is heaven. <laughs> Keegan Palmer, he's 16 years old. He's already won every skate contest there is to win in Australia. Oh, no. And that was terrifying. So he, Keegan he Palmer knew. with a, a little bit of a false start there. Going for that nose blunt up on the uh, box. He didn't even give me a chance to uh, tell everybody in the world that he is our uh, two-time Australia, uh, Australian continental champion, 2018 and 2019. He broke his wrist on Vance Park Series last year. Didn't even bother him. He came right back next to Vance, skated again. Patrick Ryan, this guy has been just destroying this park throughout this entire week. He's another guy that he goes so fast and with such confidence, you lose sight of how hard the tricks are. Look at that. He had too much speed for the nose blunt and then just carves his way. Like he's getting speed on the flat. Oh, man. Nose blunt. So that corner pipe about yeah. a, a, a foot and a half out from that flat wall. There you see, that's what he just pulled back into. Oh, I love that alley-oop. I saw him do that earlier and actually skim by the judges, go in the tent and then out. There are judges right there. The Patrick Ryan. You know, he, the word lofty always comes to mind when I watch him skate. He just floats all his airs. We didn't really get the chance to see him do one of those big frontside or backside airs that we've seen him been doing all week long. So that's a good setup run for Patrick Ryan. He went down about halfway through. 42.50 to start it off. 
Remember, all these skaters have four runs, and it's just your best run that counts. All right, this guy has been the talk of Shanghai all weekend long, Roman Pavich. He won the semifinals. Oh, no. And maybe just I over. They don't hear us. Getting that first run jitters out. Yeah. He has been, been kind of low key uh, as to him skate. You know, it's, it's not. You don't really notice when he drops in, and then suddenly he'll do the hardest things. And so uh, it's no wonder that he qualified him first. And had he made that right there, I mean, that was right out of the gate. Wall ride into the bank, then a 360 over the volcano. What a start. There you see CJ Collins, 15 years old, 84.33. Luis Francisco, you have these two teenagers just come in quick, throwing sledgehammers against the wall dropping scores in the 80s. And then from there, things got a little squirrely. Patrick Ryan, Vincent Matherone, Roman Pavich follow third, fourth, and fifth, all with throwaway scores for now. So we just saw a visual of our judges. They are vert influence, street influence, park influences. You know, these guys uh, eat concrete for breakfast. They love it. <laughs> and so uh, we put that panel together. This is what they're looking for. They want to see you go really fast. They want to see you do hard tricks. They want to see you use this entire park, and they want it to be smooth. They want everything to flow together. No choppiness between tricks. And, uh, of course, they're looking at how long you grind. If you're going to do air, make it a big air. They want to see everything bigger, better, faster, stronger. Yeah, they don't want to see straight up and down uh, lift tricks. All right, so uh, before CJ Collins drops, let's go down to the deck and listen to Chris Pastors with an update from Carl Ber about Carl Berglund. Yeah, what's up, fellas? I talked to Carl. He's here on the sidelines and unfortunately took a gnarly slam yesterday in semifinals and has a small fracture in his left shoulder. So Carl Berglund will not be skating here today. He's very bummed, and we're bummed, too. We, we love seeing some Carl Berglund. Yeah, Pastors, we saw that slam yesterday. That was scary. Whew. Hold our breath there for a minute. Came in hot though with that nose one slide. Again, these, these guys are doing three, four tricks in one and doing it in really scary parts of this park. And tra tra traversing from one part of the park to the other. That's that's what's most impressive. You know, as 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 they make they make it look so easy and unplanned. It's pretty cool to watch the practice sessions, to watch the qualifiers, to see these guys work out their runs in their head. Definitely by no means formulaic, but uh, you, you know they know exactly where they need oh, to go. Oh, there you go. That was the boneless. Boneless to, to nose bone. Look at that 360. He's got he's got a perfect way to land high and it's like a semi squat, but keep his speed up. Whoa, frontside alley oop, switching it up here on this run. He likes that little quarter pipe flat wall thing. That back lip is insane. Look at this alley oop here. Heel flip with no speed, sticking on the wall into a 540. Come on! He still has Just 10 seconds. Forcing it to work here. But this is going to be a crazy score. If he can stay Oh, up. late shove! Big spin up to the bank. We haven't seen anything like that here. I feel like the first 35 seconds of that run was planned, and then for the last five seconds he goes, all right, well, I'm here. I've done all my work. That was amazing. This is going to be extra credit. He did it right in front of the judges. That was a crazy run for Luis Francisco from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And he switched up the tricks on the different uh, transfers, on the different hips. And then he looked like he was struggling for speed here, but able to just hold strong. That was, that was amazing. So the score comes through. It's an 82.33 for Luis Francisco. So why two points lower than CJ Collins? Um, I think CJ had a little more danger factor going for him, um, especially with uh, going up on that box with the Thrasher logo and, and on the bank. But uh, it's tough, man. That, that is a hard, that's a hard call. I feel like Luis did maybe more tricks, but you know, in, in looking back at what the judges are looking for. Yeah, I mean, you know, we saw, like we saw him do that backside big spin late shove it. It's kind of a fly out trick. Probably they weren't counting it for that much, but I thought it was you, super cool. You can't trick the judges. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Kurt that Cables early. with the nose grind. Remember, he's coming in uh, and there's nothing underneath him. It's not like he's coming into the same quarter pipe. He's dropping down a level and he is flying. Note yeah. the speed that Kurt Cables is skating with right now. He has to, he's almost has to slow down. Right there, he had to slow down for that giant bank. That's how much speed he has. Oh, he's trying that kickflip back tail. We saw him do that in practice easily. 
He's one of these guys that just makes skateboarding look so good. He just looks so natural on his board. You know, I watch current capable and go, God, I just wish one day, just for one day, I could just skate like that. I would skate all day. I would skate for 24 hours a day. He literally floats around the park and he's super technical. If he can get that kickflip tail slide, I mean, that's going to be huge. That is, look at that. He's got that. Pinch. Oh, he's got the pinch too. Almost got his foot flying off there. There's a lot that can go wrong right there. I don't even want to put that out <laughs> yeah. into the universe, but that was scary. And the judges, of course, they note where you come in from your tricks as well. So Vincent Matheron, his first run, a 40.73, some room to grow. Skater out of Marseille, France. Oh, that was cool. That's a gap up. Yeah, that's a very small target to try to hit your truck on, especially when you're going that fast. Yeah, one thing that is a constant for Vans Park Series is good style. Everybody in this final has really sick style. Oh, that 360 flip's getting in trouble. I saw him make that every time in practice. Oh, so he leaves a full 18 seconds on the clock. I mean, you really only had two, you've only had two scores of notes so far, so the nerves kind of got these skaters shook to start us off. Keegan Palmer, he is always a steely, He's a super veteran competitor, but at such a young age. He's been competing here at Vans Park Series, I believe, since he was 13 years old. His first event, he was fully padded up because he was 13 years old. We said, right. no, you can skate. But now uh, you know, he's growing up, he's maturing, and... Oh, here we go. Nose pick, more power, <laughs> as you can see right there. It's on now. Stalefish into the shallow end, Indy Aliu. And that's the kind of traveling that the judges like to see. I can't believe that frontside nose one is, is sort of the go-to trick up there. Nice, kick from Indy. Oh, Indy 540. Are you kidding? Wow, well, yanking it off too. Didn't have a lot of speed, so he had to pull out further. And that's the risk of a bottom land. Fakey to fakey, mute five, cab disaster. Oh, this is the run. What is this? Kick from Sailfish? Throw it out there for fun. That, uh, that, uh, wow. I mean, so the last trick's not going to count, <laughs> but that was jam packed, and I don't know if he really needed that last trick. Are 16 year olds supposed to skate like that? Is um, that normal? Sure. Yes. Yeah, why That's not? That's what we expect everyone at this point. This is Vance Park series. That, I mean, this combination to me. The kickflip into the 540. Yeah, that's not. That shouldn't be possible. Not a good angle too to to approach that as an Indy five, because he kind of has to almost cut alley oop to get into it, and uh, that can really wreck your spin. Crazy. Well, the score came through 75.13. That's enough for third place. We're gonna go to Patrick Ryan now. Patrick Ryan's first run, just a 42.50. We'll see if he can uh, finish his 42nd time. Wow. Back to the tail slides with command. Oh, look at that. A little overturn. Switch crook. Oh, here we go. Nose one. That was scary. And he made it look so even harder. Easy. Oh, man. That, he was almost hanging up on that. That was hard. He, he went so high. It, it's, as you go higher on these walls that aren't quite vert, you have to yank out much further than on a vert wall and he didn't quite get out enough so that he was gonna hang up. You know, that was looking like the run. He's really doing everything the judges wanna see. You see his tail slides are just a little bit longer than everybody else's. He's just going a little bit faster. So if he can clean things up, get that air, finish strong. The one thing about Patrick Ryan is he gets really pissed. When he falls, he gets really mad. He needs to tone that down and just use it to his advantage. Oh, here we go. Here's the run that Roman wanted. Roman Pavich, Ocean City, Maryland. Full 30 seconds left this run. He's already done 12 tricks. Wow. That was scary. Nice, alley -oop, lip slide. I saw him uh, struggling with that in practice. I love how he looks like he's always in the back seat. Eric, he's got one of the cool, coolest looking styles wow. of anybody in this final. Oh, big bonus disaster. Uh oh, around the corner. Wow. I don't, was that intentional to go around the corner like that? I think he just reacted. Wow. That was crazy. That was amazing. So. When he got into the, the deep end, he did a basically a nose grab 540 around the corner, which is incredibly risky, incredibly dangerous, and did it with ease. 
What is the hierarchy of grabs with the 540? What's the hardest grab you can do? Uh, well, going backside, stale fish is kind of the one that slows your spin down the most and makes you have to sort of adjust your body in a way that doesn't work. But the idea that he did this, he did the 540 around the corner, makes you have to pull out way further and a very high chance of hanging up. Which no one does 540s around the corner. That just doesn't happen. Worst case scenario, the hang up. There's, all, it, there's almost every case is bad, except for what he did. Well, the judges are right there with us in our fandom for Roman Pabich. That score is massive, 88.17. Again, doing everything the judges want to see. He is followed by CJ Collins, Luis Francisco. The teenagers have come correct here to Shanghai. And your top three, everybody, they're, they're uh, not even old enough to vote yet. <laughs> Roman Pavich is 17 years old. CJ Collins is 15. Here we go, we're back to it. CJ Collins for his third run. Oh, that nose one slide looks so easy when he does it. This kid is one of the most unpredictable skaters that I've ever watched. Oh, almost hanging up there. Never a plan. Saving it with a squat. <laughs> Some people are, are planned out. This kid never plans his run. He just goes. Here we go. Oh, wow. I think that was planned. That was so, oh my gosh. Oh no, missing that nose one. He's, he's just got that stream of consciousness look, right? He drops in and you get to, he's just kind of guiding, he's just guided by the light to the tricks that he wants to do. The no comply nose blunt is, there's physics there that don't Yeah, here we go. Right, that sense. nose blunt, well, not the tail, ah. the no comply to tail. That's a big step for him, too. Oh, yeah. What, I mean, that's his four legs feet? are not that long. That's chest high. We didn't get to finish that run, so the score comes through a 58.90 for CJ Collins, his third run. He'll have one more go. Remember, we uh, lost Carl Berglund with a heavy slam yesterday. Bummer for that, but Luis Francisco now with an 81 and 82. This kid knows how to compete. Oh, big boneless down there. He knows how to get the crowd behind I him I don't as know well. if that was meant to be a gap when this park was designed. Wow, those 540s are so nice. It's a weird word to use, but for him, I think of him as a showman. He loves it. He, he feeds off the crowd. I've seen it in Brazil. I've seen it anywhere he skates in a contest. He loves it. Oh, this is not very off flip. He just Luis, saw that Luis took that melon five around the corner as well. Even though he did it, it landed low. It's still frightening that those guys are doing that down there. Look at these two scores. 81.07, 82.33. That that run right there is incomplete, so it'll come somewhere, you know, the 63-7 range. If he finishes the run after the way he started right there with that boneless psycho, psycho drop, whatever you want to call it. There, yeah. He could be right up there in the mix. Currently sitting in third place. And uh, another skater we lost early was uh, Marilla Perez, which is a bummer because he is so fun to watch. Here we go, current Capels, currently in fifth place. He needs an 88.18 for first. Oh man, that nose ride is so gnarly. Probably best, best in the business, or one of the best in the business, I should say. I, you can see when he, he feels like his, his feet aren't in the right place, he tries to go to disaster there, which is just, in my opinion, a very uh, dangerous <laughs> It's dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous is a great word to describe that. So that was the third run. It was a quick one for Curran Capels, just a 9.83. His highest score so far, 64.13. Coming up next is Vincent Matherone with a pair of 40s. He's gonna double that if he wants to get himself into that top three. He is just electrified every time he like drops in. When he, when he grinds that little kicker, it's almost like a carnival game. You know, there's placement. Yeah. Ting. Oh, did it. 360 flip. Going backside. He hasn't made that yet, so we haven't seen the rest of this run. Wow, right there. Oh. Oh. Again, Spine Master growing up in Marseille. That's probably the most famous spine in the world. Yeah, that backside sugarcane revert is is a rare trick in any situation. That's it. 
I got to go to Marseille for the first time ever last year, but I felt like I'd been there many times before because I used to play Tony Rogers. <laughs> yeah. I actually had not skated it um, until a few years ago myself. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Congratulations. So I did the same thing. I played it on my video game before I ever You got skated. the lines all figured out before you got there. Yeah, they weren't as easy. It's a little different in, in person, reality, isn't it? yeah. Well, congratulations, 20 years, the anniversary of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Oh, yes, thank you. You've, you've made a lot of skateboarders. <laughs> it was like a training ground. I'm sure a lot of the guys that are skating today got their start with that game. Here we go, Keegan Palmer. He's, this kid skates like a living video game. His nickname from uh, Tim O'Connor on the deck is Fortnite. <laughs> it used to be Fidget Spinner, but he's matured now to Fortnite. <laughs> And I, was he say, I was say, my video game is much older than Keegan, so. <laughs> yeah. See that nose mine. Aims it so perfectly. This kid is among the most consistent skaters we, uh, we have on this entire series. Oh, man, those melon flies. See right there, he didn't go around the corner that time because his aim was, was more accurate. Oh, missing that pinky to pinky five, though. So that was Keegan Palmer's third run. His highest score, 75-1-3. Just out of that top three, he'd need to get something in the mid 80s if he wants to find himself in that top three finish. Oh, that's a cool looking trick. Just a glitch on the landing though. Kind of uh, hit the, the top part of that. But it didn't yeah, really no one, seem no to affect that. Yeah, that's all right. He did a melon five out of it. No harm done. There's Keegan right there. You can tell he's kind of doing the math in his head. Put it, okay, where do I need to finish? Where do I need to be? Corrections will be made in his fourth and final run. Here we go, Patrick Ryan. 56-4-3 on his last run. Wow, he's, he's not playing it safe in terms of the amount of speed he gets. Oh, there that, oh, wow. Such good pop in from that trick. It's like a 270 to switch pivot and then popping in. Wow, oh, I love that angle that we saw right there, showing you how. Go. See right there, he decided not to do the front side air because he hung up on it last time. It went to disaster, which is probably a much safer bet. There's al -Yuk. he had a problem with that his first run. This is his best run by far. Five seconds left. Oh, wow, wall jam. And 5-0 revert. There we go. That's how Patrick Ryan got it. himself into the final skating like in the that. top three for sure. Grosso approved. And if Grosso approves, you've done something right. Wow, that is a stacked peanut gallery. <laughs> if they're hyped, you know you did something good. Waiting for the score to come through. Look at this huge disaster. So easy to break your board on stuff like that, too. You know, I think loud skateboarding is rewarded. If you're skating and you're slamming the coping, you're landing disaster heavy, the judges are going to react. He does get that score up there, 77.33. So maybe just fit in one more trick. I mean, that's that's right on that red line. He's I, in fourth I'm place. That, I'm thinking that the judges are liking the 540s based on how they scored that run. All right, here we go. Your current leader picking up from where he left off yesterday. Oh, wow. Way up and over. He just looks so comfortable in this park. He had some big finishes last year, but this is definitely a new and improved Roman Pavich, and that's saying a lot because he was ripping last year. Yeah, he's got one of the most difficult lines to follow here. Wow, look at that back tail up the, up. And then this backside nose blunt dump truck in. And looking for that 540 around the corner. That's it. Wow, this kid is. Oh, what? I don't know. That was right there on the edge of time. Well, definitely the trick was going to count. Indy 3, he kind of wobbled out. But what? He, he's already in first. Scorched Earth. <laughs> I mean, I was, I'm thinking like, what's it going to take? Well, he's already in first, so it's just going to take him to hold on to that score that he already had. And this is just telling everybody else in the finals, either give up, <laughs> yield, yeah. or go as big as possible. That is, I mean, the, the 88.17 that he dropped earlier, a similar run, just a little bit cleaner, maybe a little bit faster. He's got more to give. Uh, and there's a reason why 
consensus said, everybody said yesterday as they watched Roman, anybody you'd ask, who's going to win this contest? Everybody said Roman Pavich. He's, he's proven them all correct. That makes our job easy <laughs> when, he, when he makes us sound smart, like we know what we're talking about. So this is your current standings for the men's finals. Roman Pavich in the lead, CJ Collins in second, Luis Francisco in third. Teenagers at the top of the leaderboard. Patrick Ryan creeping in there in fourth place. And he's, you know, he's right there with a 77.33. We know he has a score in the high 80s in him. He's got to stand his board. He's got to get every trick in that run. Here we go, fourth and final run. Here's where you can potentially see that first trick rebate. Oh no, kick flip in. Oh my goodness, that was so frightening. There we go, there's the first trick rebate. Yeah. Now if you're gonna use it, use it on something like that. Yeah, that, that, was, your, that was your Hail Mary trick right there. And the crazy thing is, I've seen him try that trick, fall, and go back and try it again. Well, we do have a best trick event coming up after this. We might see it then. So here's what happens. We reset the clock. I think he's going to try it again. It would not be a surprise to me. He's in second place, 84-3-3. It looks like there's some concentration happening yeah, there. He's going for it again. Do it. Yep, here it is. Oh, oh. man. I, so scary. So one of the parks we have on the Vans Park Series, the Crocs Box Skate Park in Malmo, Sweden. There's a tombstone, just pretty much like that, but about four feet higher. He kick flipped in from there. One of the heaviest things I've ever seen in my life in skateboarding. So as it stands now, CJ Collins with his fourth and final run. He did enough to get himself in second place. And now it's up to Luis, Kern, Vincent, Keegan, Patrick, and Roman to uh, catch up. Your current leader, Roman Pavich, 88.17. So uh, no chance for CJ to catch him, but here we go. Luis Francisco, high score for now, 82.33. A giant boneless, man, that is a big drop to try to go straight into a lip slide around the corner. Well, he must have been watching Cal. Oh, Hail Mary, caught it dark side, folded it over. I, I can't explain uh, how. <laughs> Impossibly risky that was. Indy 5 over, well, Indy 360, I guess. Melon 5, watch out. 14 seconds left. Oh, big alley -oop. Remember when I said he was the one to watch? Yeah, you're, you were absolutely correct. In that assessment of Luis Francisco. Oh, man, those heel flips are perfect, too. And Indy 3, oh, that was a great run. That's kind of put him up there. Oh, I would be it. very surprised if that doesn't put him in second. He knows it right there. Look at that look on his face. You know, I feel like anytime when somebody does a flip trick and you can see the bottom of their shoes from the deck, so, they've done it proper. So he did a kickflip indie there, didn't flip all the way. This is see it. And then he caught the wrong side of the board and just threw it under his feet. The, his face after that, he goes. The risk factor in that goes to 11. And then right here, that's almost an Indy 540 into a Melon 540. Sometimes those are the mistakes that can actually pay off in your favor. Yeah, or sometimes they'll put you in the hospital. Well, the judges come through with the score, a 79.50, so just under his opening run of an 81.10. He's still in the top three. Now he's just got to sit back and watch as coming up next, this is one of the perennial favorites in any kind of session, current Caples. I guess they weren't feeling that dark side catch. <laughs> yeah. Here we go, no screen. Oh, missing it again. Wait, is that his first trick? I think that might be his first trick. First trick. So you can, you can, you know, there's a little bit of looseness in that rule. You can pump around the park. They really take it, take your first actual trick attempted into consideration. 40 seconds goes back on the clock. There's a soy. He's stoked. Throwing shakas. Here we go. Current Cable's back at it with 40 seconds on the clock. He's gonna go straight. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's gonna change it up here. He wants that nose grind. There it is. He's got it. Yeah. And if you can do nose grinds like that, just do them all day long. Ooh, throwing that, throwing that bonus tail just to give it a little flare. Oh. Some of the silky, silkiest errors in the business as well. Just like that. <laughs> Whoa, big nose blunt. All right, 12 seconds left. Here Kick we go. Flip back tail. Oh, that one. He got away from it again. So he's going to save that trick in his back pocket at the end of his run. I don't think that the tricks he, he was doing necessarily super hard, but they looked so good that that kind of 
goes we, over we never, the technicality factor. True, and we never quite got him, got to see him get past that one that he wanted that kick for back tail, and uh, it would have been great to see him pull a whole run. Well, as it stands now, Roman Pavich, CJ Collins, Luis Francisco are all safe in the top three. Coming up next, Vincent Matheron. His last score is a 73-4-0, so he did improve after a pair of 40s. Here we go, fourth and final run. Whoa. Oh, was that his, yeah, that was his first trick? I guess it was sort of a nose bonk. Yeah, no, no first wall rebate needed for Vincent Matheron. But he's gotta start doing tricks. Yeah, he's hitting everything, but he's just doing errors, so you definitely want to see some more technicality. Oh, 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 the 5 -0. All right, there you go. You asked. That's, that's what we were provides. looking for. I don't know if that was intentional, but it was solid. Oh, what's this? Wow. Going for a back disaster up the box, and then that was we used going, to call that the ollie in. That was going really wrong really quick. So Vincent Matheron will not be able to catch our leaders. But that was one of the tricks of the day right there. <laughs> it almost looked like it was unintentional, but he kind of forced it up in there, knowing that he could have just added that extra little grind. Yeah, well, he knows he knows he goes to kick turn there. And uh, and if it if his feet land on it, and they land on the truck, why not? We see uh, Lee Kakino and Murillo Perez, too. Two guys that are always stand-up performers. All right, Keegan Palmer, a definite threat to uh, creep into that top three. Here's his big start. Here we go. So first wall rebate. 32 seconds left. Whoa, big ollie there. alley -oop. Looks like he wants to get the speed up. Oh no, I was going to say his feet were not in position there. He's going to throw his board in the no, a solid showing for Keegan Palmer. 16, uh, 15 years old. He's an Australia national champion, two years running. The kid is gnarly. 75-1-3 was his high score. He had more to give. It was one of the, it, that was one of those instances, one more run, and we probably would have seen something wild. Right, Keegan Palmer. All right, only two more skaters to go. Patrick Ryan, your last skater for, to, to potentially crack into that top three. Wow. Beautiful backspin. Standing up on that backspin. Going for the nose one instead of the uh, switch 5 0 thing he does. Oh, there we go. Big nose blunt. Right oh, huge front side there. there that, he just, he reaches a threshold of height there that is sort of out of the zone of, of a mini ramp. Well, uh, because it's not a vert ramp, he's at risk of hanging up and he threw it away. It just gets scarier from there. Well, as the, as the scores come through, it's a 45.90. That means your champion, he just got the memo, Roman Pavich from Ocean City, Maryland, 17 years old, just took out the first stop of the 2019 Vans Park Series here from Shanghai, China. You see him breathe that massive sigh of relief. How did he win this contest? Aspect. He used every part of the chorus and he was always a surprise. But, but most definitely, the difficulty factor was way up there. This is the first time in, in a long time being on the Vans Park Series that I can remember somebody dominating from the first practice of the week all the way to the finals. Huge wall ride, and then ollied way out into the into the shallow end there. Look at that smile on his face too. He's just hanging on right now. 24 seconds left. Wow, that alley. Oh my, wow, look at this. Well, now he's just rubbing it in the rest of the field. Kinda. They're going, okay, come on, go get your trophy. Back tail, what's going on? Oh, no. Ow. Well, they do have to pay to play. He did earn his money right there. That's, you wonder why we hold our breath when everyone goes on with that box? That's why, because exactly. it's a long way down and you're just 
bouncing and rolling the whole way. Well, I think the skaters of Shanghai, China just found their new favorite skateboarder. It's Roman Pavich. Basically, getting the note from the judges. If you're gonna grind, grind far. If you're gonna do an error, do it high. If you're gonna do a trick, do it proper. He did everything right. Like I said, I haven't seen this on Vans Park Series in the history of this contest. Somebody dominating from the first practice all the way to the finals. It's true, it, since the day I got here, his name was on everyone's lips. Yeah. Gotta see Roman, what about Roman? Roman did it, and you see, I mean, it's an emotional win. He's stoked, but he also just got the worst shinner ever, so. A little reminder that skateboarding is always the boss. Yeah, even, even when you're winning. Yeah, exactly. Wow, you're still so. Still taking the hits. I mean, just like they were shot out of a cannon, our eight finalists came through. Unfortunately, Carl Berglund wasn't able to skate due to an injury he sustained yesterday. He did qualify for the final, so he will get eighth place, but you gotta give it up to our teenagers. Luis Francisco, CJ Collins, and Roman Pabich. Patrick Ryan was right there with a 77.33, so close. Keegan Palmer at that 75. Vincent Matheron, he got things going with a 73. Curran Caples, he looked good doing it, but just didn't get that big score. We Right now we have Chris Pastras on the deck with our champion for the Shanghai Stop, Roman Pabich. So Roman, first off, congratulations, brother. And you've been on this tour with us since the beginning. Describe what it means to win one of these things, finally. I never thought I would win, to be honest. <laughs> but so happy, like, just making the run and seeing the score made me so happy. Finally, like, I won, I don't know. And you were on fire on this course. What was it about this course that suited your skateboarding? Um, I think I came here and I don't know, they're all, they're all different, but they're all the same. So you can kind of piece together obstacles from other ones. I kind of just did that here because there's a lot of obstacles here from other parks too. Amazing, and you win stop number one. What does this mean for you, for your park series year? It's on, <laughs> let's go, okay. let's get it. Yes. All right, Roman Pavich, congratulations, brother. Yes. I love it. That's the first time I've heard him say something like that. It's on. Let's go. He's usually just understated, flies under the radar. But right there, his skateboarding did the talking. Again, dominant fashion right there. 88.17. Just, you know, a step above everybody else in this finals. Yeah, it was pretty evident uh, from his first run that if he made it, it, it was he was going to be the ultimate winner. And uh, the great thing is he won. It's not like the pressure's off. As you can see, he's fired up now. Let's bring the next challenge. And that's what it takes to keep getting better. Well, that's exactly what we wanted to see here at stop number one on the 2019 Vans Park Series from Shanghai, China. Roman Pabich, like we said, has been dominating this park from the very first practices all the way to the finals run. So things go so fast in the finals that now is our time to take a quick look back at what we saw some of the highlights that uh, these guys just provided for us at this incredible skate park. Again, custom built exactly for Vans Park Series. So let's take a look back at the finals to see uh, how our top three did what they did, starting off with first place, top Roman, Roman Pavich. Top, look at that, that wall ride <laughs> into the 360. I mean, in the first seven seconds, he's hit three bangers there. Yeah, and you can just see as he got those first four or five tricks, done and behind him, he just started going faster, rifling yeah. off trick after trick. It was just rapid fire skateboarding. And again, proper style, super fast, really powerful. Just a, a treat to watch. That makes me want to go skateboarding. Absolutely, just like a machine. This nose pick here, in the middle of everything, like that. that's sort of a best trick event. And then yeah. this was really surprising to me, going over the pyramid into that nose grab 540 around the corner. If I had to choose one trick from this event, that's the one. So Roman Pavich right there. You could tell when he popped out, he knew what was up. That he was knew it. that he was going to get a massive score. So as you see the park right there, we will have a Thrasher Magazine Best Trick Contest. That will be on VansParkSeries.com as well as ThrasherMagazine.com. And you can tell, you know, things have kind of subsided a little bit, but it's going to fire right back up as we get towards that Best Trick Contest. So Tony, your first 
commentator job here at the Vance Park Series. What do you think of this contest? Pretty cool, right? These guys made it easy. I'm just a fan, so I'm just calling like I see it. Uh, I'm so excited to still be here, getting to be in the mix to do this, and, and thanks to you for setting me up. Hey, no problem. Your resume was pretty good. You, you got the gig for the rest of the season. Well, that was uh, incredible. It's going to take a minute for all of that to sink in what we just saw. And uh, I'll tell you, this highlights package is going to be a, a basic video part of how to skate at a skate park. This is what we all need to uh, try to achieve whenever we drop into a skate park. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights of this final. It all goes so fast, I, I, I don't even remember how this thing started. And uh, as we go back to the women, it was uh, Sakura Yosuzumi. I mean, high tech, high speed skateboarding. Yeah, she, she, she had the confidence and kept the speed up, did the, like right there. Did she the needs to be in the best trick contest. She should be, yes. She needs to mix it up. And uh, Indiara asked, again, speed, style, power, flow. She just had everything right there. Notable for Kisa Nakamura to come back from a brutal slam and skate how well she did. Most of us probably would not be walking after what Kisa went through. Not at all. And we go to the men, here we go. Oh man, man. CJ Collins straight in, kick flip into the bank. This is uh, boys to men. These are all teenagers <laughs> that, that turned into men in front of our eyes here on Vans Park Series. CJ Collins, 15 years old, already a Park Series veteran. The kid shreds. And uh, our first look at Luis Francisco, we've seen him in Brazilian Continental Championships, but then we saw him last year. He was one of these kids that gets on the Vans Park Series and everybody else goes, why did you invite this kid? He's too good. Ripping his way into third place, Luis Francisco. It's amazing to see people like him have to slow down because exactly. he's got too much speed for the course. And our winner, Roman Pavich. No surprise to anybody with how he's been skating all weekend long. Roman, he is going to be a, a threat in the rest of this year. Look at that. He had a great strategy, too. I saw him piece those lines together bit by bit. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with Jeff Grosso. It's Time Out with Grosso with Tony Hoff. We'll be right back. China, then. Hey guys, it's Tony Hawk. I'm here in Shanghai, the Vance Park Series. The men's finals just wrapped up, and I am here with legendary skater and show host and uh, opinion op-ed writer. A loudmouth idiot. Loudmouth Jeff Grosso. Loudmouth idiot me. And you're reading all my questions that I was supposed to ask you, so I'm going to throw them all away and yeah, just ask which you. which neither one of us read. What did you think about the finals? It was fantastic, man. I love Roman. We told him to scorch the earth black. He did a fantastic job. I love all the skaters. They're all fantastic. So this isn't against anyone, but man, Patrick Ryan got fucking robbed, man. <laughs> he got robbed. That's all I got I was, to say. I, I, I was a bit surprised at that score, considering the 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 difficulty of tricks he was doing and how many tricks he did. Uh, you know, I think there should be uh, a lot more emphasis put on 
how people move around the course. Right. Well, it the seems course. like uh, it, it, the, it, it, they yeah. have they have changed the <laughs> judging criteria a little bit. Right, so so they've broken it down into these all these different formats. Oh, they say this, that, and the other. Though we're gonna best trick, best, best front counts. <laughs> the, oh, like, and then they judge on overall impression, and then they do this, and then they do that, and da, da, da. And I love the I love the judge that the judging boys are great, and the skaters are great, and it's an impossible job. And CJ is wonderful, but there's no way CJ beat Patrick today. There's just no way, <laughs> and. And, he, you know, and I was really bummed Carl couldn't ride, that he got smoked yeah. yesterday because he was just on fire. And hopefully you guys will see it on Thrasher because he was ripping. And, uh, they all did a wonderful job, man. And everyone's trying to do their best. And, you know, well, welcome back to the first stop of the shit show. Like, here we are again. <laughs> but th you've been on most of these. So uh, how, how has it changed? I mean... We know that the, the DIY influence is here in terms of a park that has all kinds of different elements, and Vans is going to have legacy parks in the next four stops. So they're leaving the park there, and I feel like the level of skating is going to increase exponentially. But how has it changed since you've seen this series? Um, well, the kids are all getting much better, uh, you know, and and they're going, they're they're getting more seasoned. You know, they're, they're starting. They have strategy. They, they have strategy. They're learning how to compete. Absolutely. And, and so it yep. makes for a much more interesting event. Um, and as far as, um, you know, the, the cool thing about the park series and, the, you know, and this connection to the DIY and all that kind of crap, um, it, you know, like whatever, like, you, you know, it comes out of, of, of people building things willy nilly on their own. And, and then you all, it's like what became, what became of the baby? You end up with this on a competitive level. And what's cool about, you know, corporate death burger is that they're building them and leaving them. Yeah. And, you know, and in previous years they were only able to build one or two and now they're building two or three. And hopefully, you know, next year we'll be able to build more and leave more for. But it, it is great to see the quality gets come so far because a lot of those DIY parks they were awesome in terms of their time and space but the but they were a little bit janky and kinked and whatnot and that well, actually yeah, breeds better skaters well yeah, yeah they're being built by by gentlemen that are in, in the beginning learning and then you know perfecting their craft and they're getting much better uh, you, you know come a long way yeah you know this this is built by you know big skate park builder people and stuff so it's it's a facsimile of of something else and uh, you know and and whatever it's all relative it's all cool it's all kind of connected if you want to like search back into it you know i do a little show we did a piece on it you can That's check true. it out you know, so, like whatever but y you know at the end of the day it's a great it's a great afternoon. You get to come out. You get to watch watch the boys and the girls roll around and get evil, man. <laughs> you, you know, some people did some shit today. It was it was heavy duty, and we're about we're about to see Jake Wooten fucking go for broke. We're about to see, stick around for best trick. Thank you, Jeff, yeah. for your wrap up and your honesty. And uh, it's been an honor to be here with everyone. And uh, back to you guys. We are wrapping up the Vans Park Series in Shanghai. Thanks for watching. Stick around for best trick. not dug a hole or, or poured some cement up against a pillar at Burnside, then that entire skate park 
building revolution probably would have looked a lot different or not gone on at all. Well, it's not necessarily that you need like the city to be on board or like anything like official. It's like a DIY could be anything from slappy curb with some mud slapped up to it to a and full-blown skate park under a bridge like Burnside. Really cool to see you know, where the, the heart and the soul and the inspiration for Vans Park Series comes from. It's from those DIY skate parks are concrete pouring forefathers that really had to take it upon themselves to make something cool to skate. And now thankfully those parks are dotting the globe and informing a, a new way for the world to skate. And we're really inspired by that. And you were just inspired by Jeff Grosso. Always <laughs> Absolutely. Fun. I could watch uh, Time Out with Grosso. I think that show should be an hour long. I think <laughs> you guys should just talk and hash it out. That was incredible. I could have watched that all day, and I could have watched this all day as well. Roman Pabich put on an absolute clinic. He won the contest, made it look pretty easy. He's on the deck with Chris Pastris. I don't know. I'm going to call him after this and talk to him. They're super excited for sure. Amazing. And you've been on the Vance Park Series Tour with us for years. What is your favorite thing about traveling with the Vance Park Series Tour? I think it's all the places that we get to come to and skate with all of our friends and the parks that they build for us. It's insane. We're like, we're like VIP status everywhere. It's, it's the best. How much do you guys feed off each other with your energy and your runs? Well, a lot. Some people don't like the park first and then they see other people's runs and then they kind of steal that little line into their line and it, everyone else helps out everyone else for sure. A whole lot. Especially everyone's energy. Build off the hype. That's right. Once again, round of applause for Roman Pabich, CJ Collins, and Luis Francisco. Yeah, boys. Well, thank you, Roman Pabich, for what you just did. And to everyone watching, you're welcome for what Roman just did. That was insane. Tony, I know it, this is gonna, it's going to feel like a long wait till Brazil. You're just going to have to sit tight and wait till the next event. Are you excited to see what we're going to bring to the world in oh, uh, San Paulo? Oh, for sure. Yeah, and, and uh, there might be some new faces in there or some legendary faces. So I feel like the standings might get shaken up a little bit. But this is incredible to watch. And what a great way to break in a new generation with someone like Roman leading the charge. Absolutely an unpredictable yet epic finish for the 2019 Vans Park Series. First stop here from Shanghai, China. We're not done here yet. We got the Thrasher Magazine best trick coming up. If you're watching uh, around the world, go to vansparkseries.com or thrashermagazine.com to watch the Vans Park Series best trick contest. This is gonna be insane. These skaters are just going for Basically, cash, cash for, for tricks. tricks. This is going to be, uh, as the kids say, pretty lit. So uh, <laughs> fasten your seatbelts when you watch this. And uh, for those of you, uh, we want to thank you all for watching. Stop number one here on the 2019 Vans Park Series. We'll be coming back at you in about 30 days from now, uh, live from San Paulo, Brazil, at that incredible purpose-built skate park. Cannot wait on behalf of myself, Tony Hawk, Jeff Grosso, Chris Pastras, Hosoi, and all the legends and all the fans here in Shanghai. We'd like to uh, thank you guys for watching. Tune in to the Thrasher Magazine Best Trick. That's it from us here in the booth. We're going to go down and get the front row seat for the Best Trick Contest. Thank you guys for watching. Stay, keep tuning. You're, you're not going anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.
What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Vans Park Series, stop number one here in Shanghai. And we are doing a complete reset for our Thrasher Best Trick Contest. It's on that massive obstacle behind me, that volcano looking thing. You got the bank, you got the hips, you got the ledge. It's gonna be going off. We got my man Kyle Berard about to hand off 2,500 bucks cash for tricks. And we got legends calling the action here in Tim O'Connor and Christian Hasoy. So we are gonna get right into it. Thrash your best trick. Let's do this, 30 minutes. Yo, it is on officially right now. Game on, cash for tricks, thrashermagazine. Dot com. We are streaming Vans Park Series. Dot com. Come on, it's China, on. where it you at? On. Give these guys a round of applause. If you do something amazing, we'll call your name. Come on over here. Kyle Barrard's got the cash. Tim O'Connor on the mic, along with the legend Christian Asoy. You already knew that. Oh, that counts. That area counts, of course, of course. C.J. Collins getting into the mix. You know he's got something for that. Don't be shy. This is open to everybody that skated in the Where event. Where are the girls at? Yeah, let's chuck a female in there. Come on. Whoa, Jake Wooten. I know the girls want some cash. Ugh. Josh Borden is going for that alley-oop back lip, and uh, it Look is at that. easy. Yeah. Corey Juno, Jeez. if he doesn't win any cash, he's definitely winning the worst dressed award. That outfit is bananas. I've stood up there on top of there, Tim, and it is bananas looking down. Oh, what is CJ doing? Alling up the tail, the nose blunt? Where is everybody? Okay. I don't, even think, I don't even think they've done it with no hands coming in from the top yet, have they? The nose blunt? Yeah, I think no, it's all it's been not, with hands in the contest. It has not happened yet, Christian Asoy, but I feel like when you can do a best trick, money's on the line, Anything can happen. Josh Borden definitely eats meat. Look at this dude. Oh my God. Tristan Rennie in the mix. What's he got? Oh, there's the there's no go. hander. We'll put down the first trick here. Keegan Palmer getting into the mix, trying to cap up the nose blunt. I think we got Cash burning a hole in uh, Jake Kyle's Wooten. Pocket. You got there's some for that? Alley U50. Come on. Brought that alley -oop. Come give, over here, Give Jake. him some cash. Jake Wooten, as I said, definitely looks like he cow tips on a daily basis. Oh. This is a Yeah, where is everybody? There's cash on the line. Chuck your lives in there. Entertain us. Uh, Luis Francisco getting we'll, in the mix. We'll give money for doubles, even. Doubles routines? Let, let's see. Tandem. Let's see what everyone's got. Two dudes, one board. Will it go down? Yeah, Tristan. I don't know. That's that's a big money trick right there. Fidget spinner. Going for the cap up the nose blind. Whoa, Jake Wooden, look out. He will skate you to smithereens. I think everybody's holding out, waiting to see what everyone's got. Kevin Kowalski, warming up the legs. Corey Gino, what's he got? Dang! And by the way, fellas, we're, uh, we're talking about giving out some big bucks to like best trick of the day. So, oh, uh, that was reminiscent of Venice Beach stingy. right there, a little G turn. 50 bucks, Louise, come on over, get 50 bucks. US. We're handing out U.S. cash in China. There you go, yeah, Luis. Yeah. Keegan going for that big old nose blunt. Little beginner human going for a grown man maneuver. Yeah, Corey. Corey just crawled out of bed, came down for a snack <laughs> and an amazing trick. Oh my God! You big vanilla man. You should almost give him some cash just for bailing from that high. Did you see how he slid on his foot? I like missed that, I wasn't him. looking. I was looking at Jake Wood. I mean, the bails are almost as good as the mix. Good. All right, Kevin Kowalski getting in the mix here. Going for the finger flip the tail. 
Yeah, Keegan, gap it up the nose, Blunt. Get over here, we got some money for that. We got money for that, Keegan. Australia in the house. My man, you can turn that money into V-Bucks for Fortnite. Oh, what the? Why was there like shrapnel coming out of his pocket right there? Something in the ramp was falling apart. He's losing RMB. Pat O'Dell, thank you, bud. No, some coins, some coins were falling out of your pocket. Yeah, Tristan. Borden getting up in the mix. Vincent Matheron. Oh, going for the back D to Smith, the pop all the way in. Damn! That was sick. The sleepy turtle, <laughs> hook him up. Yeah, 100 for sure, 100 for sure. Talk about nap time. Yo, come over here, Corey. We got money for you, bud. Got money for you, got money. Holy oh, Jake Wooin. They'll let us know when it's time. Yeah, it's time. This is a webcast, man. Bandwidth costs money. Bandwidth costs money. Dang, Corey Juno might win it all. He's going to do the opposite of strip poker. Every time he lands a trick, he gets an item of clothing. He's going to be wearing a fur coat by the end of the session. Fully decked out. Pimp gear, those shoes with goldfish in the bottom. All that Roman payments, this dude just won the contest. Good Lord. Won the hearts of Shanghai, China. He's not through making money. Oh! What? Yeah, 50-50 50 from 50-50. 50 yanking it in off the top rope. Wooten in the house. Get over here, you big blonde galoot. We got money for you. 200 bucks. Oh! Gordon with the Gordon alley disaster. Alley to, to, to Smith. He actually oh, Smith put too? a combo in there. Give Borden a little something, break him off. Break him. CJ! Oh. The body burial back D up on the top rope. CJ Collins, break him off. CJ, come over here. Body burial all the way from the, the quarter pipe to body burial to back D. Oh, Curran man. going for the front blunt. Oh, oh good loud. Yeah, Corey. Gordon, going for the big spin. Yeah, make him earn it. Oh, Roman. What the? Holy. Going for the Mick, twirly bird. The Mick wooing. I don't even know what's going on. I don't even think he knows what's going on. Yeah, Vincent Matheron. Yeah, Corey. Dang. Well, we're almost 10 minutes down, and we just. Oh, we got the timer up there. You can see it. I 21 think these minutes guys left. Are just getting warmed up. I don't even. They are just getting warmed up. Oh, Jake, about to clean out the bank on that one. We'll parse it out. Corey just did that. Corey, come back over. We got money for you, Josh Whoa, Borden. Bordo. Yeah, Corey. Tristan Rennie going for that. Blunt popping all the way in. Dang! <laughs> Crushing it. Yeah, Corey. He's making loot, making loot. Roman Pavic. Dang, you know he got that one right there. Yeah, Roman. 
Holmes, what do you got for this? Get in there, dude. You're a legend. Oh, Borden. That's amazing, but do we give money? Because people did that in their runs. If you did it, if somebody did it in their run, no money. That's the rule. That's the unwritten rule that I just wrote. Oh, the back boneless of doom. Oh, there you go, Tristan no Reddy. The backside blunt. Whoa! Blunt all the way in, then wall right ollied into the tranny. Uh, I think that Tristan, come over here, bud. Get some blue. That's double up right there. Yeah, he doubled up. He doubled up. Yeah, Tristan. This dude just won 20 G's and looking for more. He's not through making money. No doubt. Corey Juno's outfit still. Just pay him for, I for the outfit. Oh my God. I don't know if you pay him or you deduct from him. What was that, Ollie up the crooked grind? What happens if we run out of money? Then Tony breaks out his wallet and starts paying him personally. Yes! Just kidding. Here it comes, right out of the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you are going full lunatic. He's got two different sized trucks right now. Broke his truck. Big in the front, small in the back, something like that going on. Vincent Matheron. Dang, that is hairball right there. What will he do? What will he think of next? Holy, on the top rope, WrestleMania. WrestleMania back, boneless attempt. Oh my God. Holy. Jake Wooten is a madman. Oh! Corey wow. Juno! Come get paid! Come get paid! You shrink wrap skeleton! Come over here and get money! Get loot! I, I yeah! Think, uh, that was ridiculous. Corey, Corey's coming You made that look today. unnecessarily easy. Kevin Kowalski. Back bonus off the top rope. Kevin Kowalski. Back boneless off the top, all the way into the quarter pipe. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. We got Corey whipping around. Oh my lord! That is it. He's gonna buy another gold chain if he keeps landing tricks. Tristan warming up with a little war ride. Hey guys, I'm looking at the cash and it's getting down, but uh, we'd love to see some big bangers come in and just give out. Holy woo in. Big chunks of this thing. Yeah, CJ. I think we're only halfway through and we're halfway through the cash. Halfway through the cash, halfway through the time. Oh! That is ridiculous right there. Yeah, Roman. Corey, you spaz. That seems so scary to me. I'd be in full football gear trying anything on there. Well, we want to see that current cable's front blunt. It's uh, Keegan Palmer's. Can we get that one guy from Burnside to show up and jump in? Dude, right into a coffin off the top rope? Yo, that is ridiculous. What a lunatic. Roman's gonna make this kickflip wall ride. Oh my god! Oh my! Dude. 
out of your gourd. Out of your gourd. Where is he from? Nebraska or whatever? What the? He doesn't know any better. Oh my god, he's gonna nose pick a TJ. Finger flip to top deck. Finger flip to wall. Do it, Borden, you wuss. Just kidding. Do it for OC. Oh my. Dude, have you stood up on top of that thing? That is so scary. Yeah, Corey. I guess while we're doing this, we can give a big shout out to Jake Phelps. Without a doubt. Crasher, rest in peace. I know he'd be here front row heckling all of you guys to make every single trick. And uh, I guarantee you'd probably make it just because he'd be yelling in your faces. Without so, a doubt. We miss you, Jake, and uh, stoked you lit a fire. Yeah. There it is. Wolski. Just as we bring up his name, they start landing tricks. Finger That's what flip I'm talking the about. tail, popping it all the way in. Here we go. Corey! All right. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, Tristan, trying to wall ride, popping Whoa. it into Fakie. Some loot. Boom! Come on, Jake. No Bam! Doubt, no that doubt. Was Respect. All right. 12 minutes on the clock. We're gonna make them earn the cash right now. Earn the cash. I still think there's more. I still think there's more. There's, there's more money. More. more tricks. Where are the girls at? Where are the girls yeah. at? Where are the girls? Show these dudes what's up. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, that was fun looking. We're going to make him earn it now, Dewey. What are you thinking? I don't know. No one has. We're going to extend that cash, that money roll. Oh! Tristan Rennie rolling up in the scene. What? Woo Reversing that wall ride. Oh. What the? Oh. Oh, that's a heart attack this right there. Live through this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Contest right here. <laughs> He's landing repeated suicide attempts. Just can't help landing on his Why well, keep landing it? Oh my, I thought that was going to be a situation. Yeah, Keegan. Keegan, good at skating. Also looks like he does good at school for some reason. I don't know why. Just clean, showers, brushes his teeth twice a day. Yeah, slob fast play. Slobby. Oh my, what are you thinking? Watch your ankles down there, Louie. What? Now you know the blood. Oh, yeah, Curran. Golden boy. You go to flat? Holy Close God. To the flat. 
Good thing you got brand new feet and everything. How did you, after a certain age, you're not walking away from that. Dude, it just base jumped. Yeah, Corey. Get it, Borden, you got it. Uh-oh, Jake is shirtless, getting serious. <laughs> the Tennessee Titan, <laughs> he's a beast. Don't make us shoot a hunky skater of the skater calendar. Yeah, Cor Corey Juno, what month is he? Definitely January. We only got 400 bucks left, so we're getting stingy right now. Stretching it out, we got nine minutes and 20 seconds left in this. Yeah, CJ. Yeah, Luis going for the cap up the sugar cane. Jeez, my man getting all up on that top rope. Sick one going for that front nose grind, taking him to Fakey. Yeah, Kevin, get it. Dude, anything on that is terrifying. Yeah, Corey. He already did a harder trick before that, though. I think the alley-oop nose blunt would have been insane. Did the alley-oop Peter Blunt grind? Give him all the money. Just give him the rest if he makes something like that. <laughs> we got Curran going for the kickflip, 5-0, or the front Yeah, one. Jake, all right, that's something that's going to earn cash. As we said, we're getting stingy I think now. the money's going to go to Curran if he makes it. 400 make left. Borden might make some money if he makes this last trick right here. Whoa. Oh, going with that big spin pivot. We got Tony Alva in the house. What's going on, Tony? How are you feeling about this? Bro, come on. This is, this is just one of the craziest events I've ever seen. I called it earlier. I said Corey and Wooten, man. I didn't even know it was in the final, but those two guys are out of their mind right now. Those guys are low. Tony Alva saying these kids are out of their minds. I don't know, but I have to agree with them, Tim. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This is insane. Yeah, CJ. Woo! Yeah, Tristan. Remember, this streaming live on the internet. Impress Earth. They're all watching you, everybody. Unprecedented numbers. Seven billion people are tuned in right now. I'm not sure if that's factual, but you never know, potential. I thought we had too much time, but I don't know if we have enough time for these guys to make it. It's crunch time. Somebody do some unprecedented. Yeah, Kevin. What? Yeah, Jake. Front 270 know. alley you. I, I like the twirly bird. The the Wooten, yeah, the Wooten twist. A little tweaky think, leg on that, that front that 360. That might be the money trip. Yeah, CJ. Oh, Corey's got shirt and pants on. What happened? What? What the? <laughs> My man like Madonna, Beyonce, switching gear in between <laughs> tricks. Yeah, Jake. Wow. Borden almost pulling the pop 
270. Corey went from underdressed to way overdressed. Now hot as hell. Bordo, make that big spin, Fiddy. Come on. You got, you got that. What? We just found more cash. What? We got 600 more bucks in the mix. What do we got? Back to 1,000 bucks. Thousand Big bucks. announcement, fellas. We're getting less stingy all of a sudden. More money just showed up. I don't even know what happened. Oh! Yeah. Hook the kid up, hook the kid up, hook the kid up. For a trick right there. CJ, front 5-0 on the top rope, popping Come it pick in. pick up your money. Yeah, CJ. Gordon, we got money burning a hole in our pocket for you. You got to make it. Tristan, Rennie, where you at, bro? He's right there, going, he was just flying into the scene. Yeah, Corey, get that. We'll give you a nice wad of cash for that one. What do you think that's worth, the back nose one? Yeah, Curran. Holy, switch staple gun. Hey, China, how are you liking this? Huh? How are you liking this? Come on, give um, these guys some, some screams. They're going to go for it right now. We got how much time? Three minutes on the clock. Let's hey, get these students. guys hyped. Yeah, Christian, I didn't think they understood us at all. I think they understand vibe. When Christian Hassori and, speaks, and there is no language. We gotta just hype it up, Tim. This is what it's about. Doing great. Wow. Corey! People keep telling us to give Tristan money. <laughs> yeah! You got that, Wooten. Woot. Yeah, Curry! That is insane. I know he's going right for the front pivot. Kick, flip, pivot. I think you need to come over here. We know he's going for the pivot. So I think uh, Curran wants to clean. To 5-0, yep. I well, see whatever. his We'll chin. give him loop for that. Going up and down. The pivot. Come on. It gets, turns into more I loop. Love yeah, Corey. You got that. Wow. Come on. Yeah, Borden, you got it. Hey, also, let's give a big shout out to Steve Van Doren. I know he's out there watching live webcast, everyone out there. We love all of you, but we especially love Steve Van Doren. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all you do. And uh, this whole contest is basically for you. We love you, Steve. Wish you could be here yeah, with us, Keegan. but you can watch right now. We're giving away cash. Whoa. And I know you love to give away cash. Keegan, we got Luke, kid. Front nose grind, the fakie, gapping all the way up on it. Oh, oh what? what? I don't think he wanted that, but Whatever. he would have took it. Zay, Corey Juno, holy woo, I think the pivot, Corey, the back pivot looked a lot like it was. Here we go. All right, we got one minute we are, left. We are a minute. One minute left. We're going to call minute it a left. time. One minute left. On. One minute. Hurry One up. Minute. We don't want to go home. Well, I'd want to go home with the money, but. 50 seconds. Dang. Woo. I don't know, but yeah, Curran. Let's send everybody home with this. There it is. Oh. Yeah, Curran. Back 
to the top. Come on, Borden. That's you the got band, this. That's the bandwidth countdown up there. Oh! Why'd you take your feet off? <laughs> this is it. Oh. I believe they're all going to get this in less than 30 seconds. Come on, guys. Yeah. This is it right now. 10 seconds. Cash for tricks. Thrasher. Seconds away. Yo, that is time right there. We're going to toss it over to our man, Chris Pastris. Thank you, guys. Wow, what an epic contest that was, and what an epic best trick. $2,500 later, stop number one of Vans Park Series from here in Shanghai is in the books. Congrats to our winners, Sakura Yusuzumi and the one and only Roman Pavich. Amazing skateboarding. Thank you to my legendary co-hosts. Thank you to our skateboarders. Thank you to Vans. And we will see you guys for stop number two in Sao Paulo, Brazil, June 23rd. Until then, thank you so much. We love you. We'll see you for stop number two. Hey,